All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Policy and Finance Committee on September 23rd, 2022. I will officially call this meeting to order. We have a quorum. All three of us are here today. With that, I would accept a motion to approve the August 19th, 2022 minutes. Motion to approve. Do I have second. A second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. All right, so the primary and kind of only agenda item today is our continuation of the ARPA application review process. Um, I'm going to go through a few things, such as our process here today and a few thoughts. I'll let the other committee members, if they have anything to say, um, add that, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, in terms of timeline, um, we sort of laid out from day one that we weren't, we were both not going to hurry this, but also have some eventual end date in sight. I think our goal has always been to try to get something in front of the governing body before the end of the year so that at least these decisions can be made and then organizations know heading into next year what funds are or are not available to them. Um, we always built in a, a October meeting, which we've already scheduled for October 28th. Um, it is my expectation that hopefully at that meeting we will pass out a list of final recommendations. Um, I do not believe that's going to happen today, and I don't want to put any pressure on this committee to do that today since it's not necessary, <laughs> since we're still within our original timeline. That isn't to say we won't make some decisions today. We may make some adjustments to, to balances. We will probably have some follow-up questions we want to follow up for either individuals who are not here or we need some additional information. And we absolutely might make some decisions on some applications that will not move forward to that October meeting. So decisions may be made today, but what you won't walk away from today is a final recommendation, and we leave the window open in October to have some additional discussions uh, on applications that we, we, what we needed some additional information for before we pass out those final recommendations. Um, today, we will go through each application. Um, every committee member will have an opportunity to make comments on that application or ask questions if individuals are here to ask questions of. Um, if, you are, if there is a group that is not here but we ask questions, that will not eliminate them. We understand that people have lives and it's a Friday and, and things are tough, but we may then f send them those follow-up applications uh, through staff or those uh, follow-up questions through staff, but that doesn't just qualify them, vi vice versa, just because you, you couldn't be here today. We understand that. Um, in regards to those questions, uh, we may not have questions of some applications. Don't read into that one way or the other. It doesn't mean we like you. It doesn't mean we don't like you. It just means we were good with your follow-up questions and, and we just don't have anything for you today. If we do ask questions, please understand there are no gotchas here today. No members of this committee are trying to, to box you into a corner or get you to say something. We will literally have very sincere questions as we walk through this process and try to make our decisions as to where best put these dollars. Um, and I will ask, as politely as I can, that try to stick to the question. I know everybody has lots of information they continue to want to provide us, and it's all important, but we also only have a limited number of time today. So let's, you know, if we ask a question, let's stay on that question and not get too far away from it. Um, as a follow-up, we are down to 53 applications, um, actually 54. Um, the total that we have left remaining requested is $12,557,324.68. That's a difference still of $2,557,324.68. So we aren't there yet. I will also remind folks that even if we do, quote unquote, drop below that $10 million number on some decisions, it doesn't mean you're in yet. We, our goal and our priority is to make sure that the dollars are going to programs that meet the criteria we have previously laid out and the direction we've been given by the council. So that's not a magic number. Ooh, we got right at 10 million, we're done. Um, we, we still have due diligence to do through this process. And my last request today is, um, I know that there were individuals who did not move on in this process. I believe over the last 30 days, we have done our best to answer every email, phone call that we've gotten with concerns, questions regarding those applications that didn't move forward. Um, if I didn't get to you, it was an oversight, so please feel free to follow up with me again. It was not on purpose. Um, I understand the frustration with that and all the concerns, but we're not here to discuss that today. We, we are not looking back. As I have said, there is not a formal appeal process in this committee. 
Once we make these final recommendations, the full governing body will have a vote and they will have input. So any of those concerns need to be directed at our colleagues um, to, to express to them changes you'd like to see once final recommendations are made. Um, but we are, we are looking forward. So I understand those frustrations and you can continue to send me emails and call me, but we're not gonna have that forum here today because we're trying to move this process forward. Um, with that, I will see if Councilmember Valdivia Alcala wants to say anything before we begin. Thank you, Chair. I um, just wanted to thank everybody for showing up as we go through the second process. Uh, this remains a difficult process. Um, I think that honestly, what I can share about this whole journey is that it helps me to understand more and more that our system overall is not working. And I know people don't like to hear that, but it's true. It's not just the city system or the county system or the state system. It is our system as a whole is not working. And I have no idea how we're going to fix that. We have calls in here for trying to raise a wage by a dollar an hour when honestly we know that a living wage right now in Topeka is close to $17 an hour and that need for small wage increases may not even get them to where, the level to where they need, uh, need to be to um, maintain good employees, quali quality employees. There, we know that there is a need for housing uh, not uh, housing that is not affordable, housing that is truly affordable and accessible, not by HUD criteria, but by criteria that specifically states in the Topeka Housing Study, which means that if you are 30% or more of your income is going into paying for your housing, you are housing cost burden. Anything else is shuffling the deck and trying to make it look like something it's not and I'm not gonna go for the something that's not. The other thing is, is that I think that as we move forward, especially with the intimacy in the city that we have, the smallness of our city, I have been aware that there are duplication of services here. I don't know that it's our job to rectify that, but I do believe that it is the job of all of these uh, organizations and even ones that did not make the cut to do their due diligence to, for all of us to get beyond our silo mentality and start partnering together, which will, to me, um, cause more money and dollars to actually flow to those that need it the most. I understand that I have been told from time to time that there is a lot of territoriality uh, in, in some of the, the way things roll with the uh, social service organizations, et cetera. Everyone does a good job, but I think it's time to see past our own locale and really look how we can partner because, you know, we are paid to provide services for those who are struggling and the need is so great when you look at these applications. So I would just ask you um, to keep that in mind. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councilmember Nager, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, what you both have said, I agree with. Um, I wanna make sure that we are working through this in a way that um, is fair and makes sense um, with this once in a lifetime opportunity for these funds. And I appreciate not rushing the process. Um, reading through these applications, um, as Councilwoman Valdivia Alcala alluded to, the needs there. And the, like um, our chair mentioned too, this is not, we have these finite funds. This is not a bearing on if your service is good or bad or anything like that. We are trying to figure out a way to go ahead and leverage these once in a lifetime funds to as many people as we possibly can. Looking through these applications, through the 54 um, answer, 54 projects, um, we are still over by a little over $2 million and if we were to go ahead and just evenly spread this $10 million between the 54 projects, each project would get $185,185.19. And there are projects that are 
fall far below that. There are projects that are far above that. And I really deeply appreciate the programs that did some deep soul searching and found ways to go ahead and work with us. Because again, this is not a bearing on if you do a good job or not. This is, we're trying to figure out how can we use this money? And I, I just really deeply appreciate the organizations that made those little cuts themselves to their initial requests because you know your organization better than we do. You know what needs the most help and where you can go ahead and find some different um, sources of funding. There are a couple projects that are far above that even distribution um, that didn't make any cuts at all. And those were um, Vallejo Behavioral Health, um, L SLI, Community Resources Council, and I want to make sure that I'm saying Community Action. And um, those are going to be the applications that I probably will have the most questions for um, because all of these are hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have people who are requested $25,000 and cut their budget by 20%. And so I um, hope that in this next round, we can look at some of these bigger projects. There are some other bigger projects where the cuts were around 1% to 10% in order for us to go ahead and really make sure that everybody's getting a piece of this pie. We can either go ahead and have everybody compromise and work together, or we're starting, we're going to have to make cuts where we aren't the experts. So I really challenge as we go into this next round to figure out how we can share this $10 million for people to really look at their organizations and see how we can be helpful to them instead of, um, and I don't want to say instead of, but figure out how we can be most helpful with the money that we have because we have finite resources. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I do have one. Yes, Council Member Aldevi Thank Excuse you, Chair. Um, I just want to make sure, Clea, is there a process that we are going to specifically and intentionally follow to track uh, the end result with what folks are saying they're going to do with after this four years or after 2026? Because while I know that these, everybody is saying, and it's true, these are once in a lifetime funds, I also think that the intentional tracking of this to see how the request met with the actions that they use this money for can be saved within the city, shared with the public to be transparent, and also be used as a future guide if anything of this nature ever comes down the track. Again, because we know that we are living in a rapidly changing world. Yeah, so for these funds, there is some reporting required, and so we will be we have we we really have to keep track, and so we'll have that information. And then you know, if if you, if the committee decides we want to make it public, and we you know we want to make it into some sort of guide, we can absolutely do that as well. But we are required to do reporting. It, it depends on the amount that recipients get, and um, it depends on some of the treasury's guidelines. They're frequently changing, but we will have to keep track of what goes on. So we will know that information as far as how they're spent, how well they're spent, and all that other stuff. Thank you. And I don't know who wants to answer this. I don't know, City Manager, you or Mr. Cochran, because I don't know. Could you, do these funds need to be spent by organizations by the end of 2026? Or do they need to be committed to be, like, contracts signed? I know that's a fine distinction, but we had a lot of that with the CARES Act dollars. And, and maybe we don't know the answer to that. But I think for some of these projects, that kind of matters a little bit in terms of what they're asking for. So, so my understanding, um, Chair, is that they have to be committed, okay. uh, contract signed. And certainly, with um, some delays in supply chain, there's there's sure. some challenges there. But we'll get the specific deadline for commit commitments okay. of funds, yeah. um, and and outlay that before we actually provide the money. Right. Okay. Yep. Clay. I mean, I. I do know the answer to that. So the funds have to be committed by the end of 2024 and they have to be spent by December 31st of 2026. Okay, so if, if you've got a contract spent, to sign. By being spent, is that 
the city transfers those funds to the organization or the organization has to spend? The organization has to spend those funds by the end of 2026. Right. It's not just us giving it to them. They have to be completely gone by the end of 2026. Right. Okay. No, I think that's an important distinction, especially for some of the, some of the capital right. improvement projects that have been right. requested. That's not right. That, that at least they've been committed within the next couple of years. You know, I think, I think uh, Deputy Mayor, we need to research that a little bit because I think oh, once the funds are transferred out of the city to a private entity, we really wouldn't have much control. What, what, what Clay is right. What, what Clay is, is saying is, is technically accurate as far as if the, the money was given directly to uh, the organizations as initially outlined by the government, but because we're doing revenue replacement, that gives a little bit of sure a leeway that we didn't have before. Yeah, and I understand that. I, I think the thing I want to get across to organizations is, because I've had a, this discussion with some of them, is some of these capital improvement dollars, it's we have a project, we're pretty sure it can be built, and my point to them is, no, 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 no. It has to be done. It's it, it, And much as I may support your project and appreciate what you're doing, if it ain't up by 2026, <laughs> we have a problem. And that and I think that's the, that's the overall thing I wanted to impress upon folks is there is a timeline component to these dollars um, that has to be met, and that's got to be one of our criteria as we follow this. So thank you for that. Okay. All right. With that, I guess we'll just get this started. Uh, and I'm just going to go in the order of the... Um, chart that I have that, that staff provided. It is in no particular order, not, not dollars or alphabetical. It's just random, which is fine. I just want everyone to know there's no, there's no order to it. Uh, the first one is the Topeka LULAC Multipurpose Senior Center. The original amount requested was $125,000. They revised that amount to $105,000, and that is what we were looking at in front of us. Um, Yes, Councilmember Valdivia-Alcala. Thank you, Chair. Um, one thing I want to mention, because I don't know if all the agencies that are still in the running are aware of it, is that in all of the questions we had asked, and I'm an, I can say specifically I asked about materials in Spanish, if there was accessibility to translation, uh, what it looked like within, you know, does their population that they serve, or does the population on their board reflect what Topeka looks like? And that is a very necessary dialogue as part of that if we're really going to get serious with DEI and get down to the nitty gritty of this. And so I really say thank you to all of those organizations that came forth and we're so transparent in that. For those, that I would say there was about half of these organizations still in the running that said either they didn't have this all in place, but they were willing to go that extra mile. And I wanna say that's important because of this point in, in the area of having translation services or uh, services that can be read in Spanish. Oftentimes children, and we need to be very cognizant of this because my mother was one of these children and my grandmother was one of these children. Uh, has ha As children with either grandparents or great-grandparents that did not speak or read English, these children were used as interpreters. We don't need that in 2022. We don't need to put that extra burden on children where they're going to doctor's appointments with with relatives where they're going to wherever it is they need to go because there is no services in Spanish or there is no services uh, that they can read. And I do understand there's more languages in Spanish, but I'm not a dummy either. And I know that the majority of our population here is Spanish speaking and has been for some time. In one of the applications, uh, we were told that we were parochial in asking that question. And I kind of take offense to that because until you have seen children miss school to be translators and just add that to the burdens that these children already have, which are may, way more than the average child because they're usually poor too, um, then I think that you understand how important the question is. So again, I just wanna say thank you for uh, those folks being transparent, for you that don't have it, that you are willing to go and get it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I guess to my committee members, the way I'm gonna to try to do this, uh, this is like one of those 
pieces of paper they see in the serial killer movies when they in their house. But I promise it's not. It's not. I want to make sure as we go through this that I'll probably start each application and rotate around who gets. You have first questions or comments, and then okay. before we go around, so just a heads up. That's how I'll try to, so that I don't suck all the air out of the room. And you're like, oh my gosh, Spencer, please move on to one of us. We have questions too. Uh, all right, so, uh, so Topeka Lulac Multipurpose Senior Center is 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 where we're at. I guess I'll go first on this one. Um, I, I don't have any issues here. I, I have no follow up questions. Um, most of them were answered in the applications. Um, and like I said, I, I'm okay with this application as is, but certainly open to any conversation or from anyone else. So, yes, Councilmember Valdivia. Uh, thank you, Chair. I would just say uh, I too believe that this should be moved on, and I appreciate Ms. Vita saying that they are willing to do what they need to do to get those services uh, in writing, you know, in text form forward. And they took a reduction, so. Anything you want to add, Councilmember Nager? Um, nothing. I'm just, since I went ahead and made pr my pronouncement at the beginning saying some people presented us with cuts and other people did not, I am um, calculating those percentages. Yeah, they took a 16% cut. So I'm good with this application. All right. Well, then we will move on. Uh, Topeka North Outreach, original request was for $20,000. The revised amount is for fifteen thousand um, dollars. Council Member Valdivia Alcala, I'll let you start on this one. Um, I, you know, we asked them to provide the zip codes that they serve, and I think that it's worthwhile to just tell you some of what those are. Everybody knows that East Topeka Senior Center is located in Rice Community Center, right? So way into East Topeka but yet they service the entire city. They have in the 66608 area code 19 that they serve and 66605 31 individuals that they serve in the 66614 area code 22 that they serve in the 66616 area code 25 that they serve. I think with looking at this information, what it helped me to realize is how deeply they are a part of that unknown component in the Topeka community that services our elders that cannot drive or that does not have family that can take them to their appointments, the entire wait, city. Wait, wait, are we on the same? Are we? Topeka North Outreach? Oh, no. I know what you're talking about, the East Senior. Oh, Topeka sorry. Senior. We can do that one. You started Let's it. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. Let's do so it. East Topeka Senior Center. Then we'll backtrack. I don't know how. All right, just so everyone knows, that work. request was for fifty thousand dollars. The revised yes. amount was for forty-seven thousand four hundred and ninety. <coughs> Sorry, guys. No, you're good. I was okay. just like, wait. Hannah, are you there? <laughs> I am. Thank I'm you. Waiting. Thank you. Honey. Um, they also had cuts, cost, um, cuts, cost, cost cuts, and they are really putting the majority of their money into additional, um vehicles to get people to and from appointments so thank you uh right. I, I will add what i i echo everything you say i also think what's important to note on this application is there's an 80 percent match from kdot if they can get some of these funds and it's really hard to turn down sometimes something where we can say we pay 20 percent and 80 percent is covered by someone else and so i think it's important that they're to note they're also going to be leveraging those dollars uh very few dollars to get a, a much bigger reward because there's additional state and federal dollars available. So, so that was also a plus for me uh, in their application. Councilmember Nager, anything you'd like to add? You guys covered everything. I especially appreciate the fact that they're leveraging this money for more money, um, because then we're going to just amplify these dollars. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to put it into the continue to move forward pile, unless there's an objection. Now we'll back there. We'll go back up to the Topeka North Outreach again. Right that was there. that was a $20,000 request reduced to 15,000. Councilmember Nager, anything you'd like to say here? I appreciate them making that cut. Everything looks good to me. 
council member Valdivia Alcala, anything you like to add? Um, I do have question. I do have two questions on this. Well, a question and a comment. I would like to know. It looks like on their budget on food they're spending for a year almost 140,000 a year on food and I would like to know if they get their food wholesale or if how how it is they exactly that they Is there someone here today from from Topeka North Outreach either online or in person? Do we know Gretchen if anyone's raising their hand? If you are put your little hand raise or unmute yourself and speak up. If you're not as I said earlier that's okay too. We will doesn't look like it. Mm -mm. So I guess that's one of the questions we would like to ask them is is how who, where they purchase those that food and if they're able to get wholesale pricing. The other comment I had is is that if you look at the original application they fill a lot of bags for kids which is so concerning because it really you know if if, if all of these are given out it really lets you know how many hungry children there are in the area. But one of the things that they say when they pack their lunches and their snack boxes, uh, it's not for me to be judgmental on this. It's for me to have concern because we know through a multitude of studies that children eat too much processed foods. It can lead to cognitive issues. It can lead to weight issues. There was an obesity study on Latino children that was just done by two Washburn nurses in the Deer Creek area a couple of years ago. But there's all types of information that comes out uh, about the dubious nature of how much food our kids are eating that is processed. And so I understand that that may be the need that only they can only feel in this particular way by having this type of food. I think that it begs the question, you know, for the city, because the city has got on board to start talking more about community gardens and how it is that we learn to feed our community less money, more nutritious. And thank goodness all these volunteers are a part of helping bag so many lunches. Um, I just, I'm just making that as a comment. Clay, if you could put that in there, um, and that's all I have to say on that. Yeah, and I guess then the second question for them would be just if they could just tell us what an average lunch looks like. I'm kind of curious. Um, for me, this is one that if it moves forward, I actually, and don't get too excited, everyone else, I'm not going to say this very often, I actually think that their original amount requested is probably what they need versus the addition, the $5,000 cut that they graciously made. Mm -hmm. So if this moves forward, I would like to, I guess, have us look at reinstituting it back to the full request of $20,000 instead of the fifteen. I don't know what everyone else's thoughts on that are, but like I said, you, you won't hear me say this very often, but, but it was one that I, I definitely thought. I, I understand they made the cut because we asked, <laughs> but I, I'm not sure that they needed to on this one. Um, so I don't know if there's thoughts. Yeah, yes, Councilmember Nager. Um, with that, my thought is it's, yeah, it's this is a $5,000 cut, and that's 75%. They went from, I want to make sure that I'm saying 25, it correctly. We got you. They, they cut 25% of their um, original ask, and it's a $5,000 ask. Um, yeah, they could go out and fundraise that, and if that's where we come down to and we can only give that um, $15,000 in the end. Um, I totally understand, but I do very much appreciate you making that comment. And this would be something that I could have a little bit of flexibility going back to the 20,000 with the initial ask because, okay. yeah. But I'm gonna recommend we, we put that in our spreadsheet for now uh, with the <laughs> asterisks that if we need to go back to the 15, we will. But... I was making an asterisk. That's right, you were, you were the asterisk, the Nager asterisk. <laughs> All right. All right. With that, we will move on to IBSA, which is uh, original amount was for ninety-two thousand uh, dollars. There was no revision to the amount, so the final request is is ninety-two thousand uh, dollars. I will say to everyone who did not make a reduction, everyone explained why. Whether we have questions about that or not, I will say nobody just blew off that question. 
uh, even though in terms of even if they didn't make it, they, they went into a detailed explanation as to why they it wouldn't work for what they were asking or so I do appreciate that everyone who didn't make one did provide some rationale for their for their reasoning so thank you for that to everybody mm -hmm. um, so my thought on this one, as I'll go first, is uh, all the questions were answered very fully. Um, I don't have a lot. I have some knowledge of this program, not firsthand, and that I've worked with it or been a part of it. Certainly, I've talked to its administrator multiple times since I've been on this council about various projects um, and work that gets done over there. Um, but like I said, the, uh, I felt that our questions were answered, and I have no objections to this application. Councilmember Nager, any thoughts? Um, yes, they did show that this was going to be spread out over multiple years. So this would be important to find out the 2024, 2026 sort of cutoff. And um, they said we can take a reduction, but we're requesting our full proposed amount. Um, with this being under a hundred thousand dollars, this didn't um, get my gut going like it did with other um, applications. Um, I appreciate that they had that flexibility. If they're, if we get down to the point where we can only give percentages to people instead of a modified um, budget request, um, I do think that even if one of these years was just partially funded, we can make that happen. So I'm fine with this moving forward as is, knowing that there might be some, that year four might be a little, <coughs> Shorter. Sure, sure. Councilmember Valdivia. Thank you. Um, you know, it has a very detailed budget breakdown, which is always impressive. That's more understandable. Um, I am taken with the fact that they um, want to somewhat model themselves over uh, neighborhood networks. I think the point of this program and other programs like this, whether they're here in Topeka or whatever community, that really seeks to place the services within the neighborhood, uh, within close proximity where people work, where many may not have vehicles or are taking the bus or where they have accessibility to walk to um, a new center is very, very important especially if you consider if there is any services that they may be providing elders and we know how much more difficult transportation is for elders. Um, so I understand, you know, that there wasn't a cut. I understand that this in this particular area of Southeast Topeka, uh, the need is there. And so I, I support moving it forward. Unless there's objection, we will move it on. All right. The next application I have is Patterson Family Child Care. Original request was for fifty thousand dollars. The uh, revised amount was forty-one thousand two hundred and eighty dollars. Um, Councilmember Valdivia Alcala, would you go first? Um. It looks like the person herself that wrote the grant took the deepest reduction for herself, which, I mean, figuring everything that they probably have going on at that daycare center with taking care of littles, right? It's just impressive to know that there's people out there that will really think about and be so intentional about they, what they want and how they're willing to cut. I did want to know what their current hourly wages. Do we have Patterson? Yep. On Melissa here or online or anyone representing? Them? Yes, I'm here. Okay. We'll get you queued up here so we can see you or hear you there. Hold on. Just a second. Oh. There we are. There's a lot on Hi. Zoom, so it takes us a minute. So we gotta, Yes, we gotta and, go and hopefully have one that's upset in one of the classrooms, so hopefully you don't hear yeah, them. Yeah, you're all right. Those of us who've had kids um, understand. It demonstrates the need. Yes, the majority of my staff um, do make under $12 an hour. Okay. H how many employees do you have? 
including myself, we are at nine. Oh, so how many children total do you have? Twenty-four. Okay, great. Okay, um, thank you for answering that. I definitely think that you all must be doing a wonderful, wonderful job with being so invested in children. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. Um, I'm good with moving this forward. So as we, we've talked about duplication of services in some of not just these applications, but community services, one of the things I've tried to do as I've gone through this is understand that we do have some applications that do, do some duplication. That doesn't make one of them worse or better than the other, um, but we have obviously some finite resources. And so uh, I am supportive of this application, not just because it was an impressive application, she gave us the information that we needed, it, it outlines the budget, it's sustainable long term, which has been a big one for us, particularly in child care. Um, I'm currently serving on the regional task force for child care here in the city, and one of the discussions is not just an availability of people, but it's it's that the pay is just simply too low. That we that eleven to twelve dollar, as she mentioned, is just not cutting anymore. If it's not in the thirteen to fourteen to start, you just can't get people to come work for you. Um, so I am supportive of this application moving forward. Um, as you'll see later, though, that's been part of my balance of as we have other child care services, which ones do we funnel our resources? And so, so I'm supportive of this one um, at this time. Councilmember Nager, anything you'd like to add? You guys said everything. I'm supportive. All right. We'll move that one forward. All right. The next are two separate applications, but we will go ahead and, um, and since a lot of those who had multiples answered in one form, we'll put them together. These are the, This is for the community center at Ripley Park. Um, the first application was for $25,000, and it included some capital improvements uh, to continue their services. So this, this is going to sound, at the end, there were no revisions. The, the total between the two requested was $50,000. Uh, in the end, that's essentially what they were requesting. One went down, but one went up because the cost of things are going up. Not their fault. Um, and so I appreciate that they at least reflected that change um, in their request as that, that new cost has gone up. But, but the total request now between these two is for $50,000, um, $25,000 each. Um, so with that, Councilmember Nager, any comments you'd like to start off with on this one? I have a quick question about that because on my, yes, the um, walk-in freezer and cooler, plumbing and signage, that first thing, um, it went up $696. That's how much it went up, by the way. Um, so that's very small when we're talking about the $2 million. Um, I have that there is a reduction for the kitchen remodel. There is. I, I misspoke. So it's actually a total of $45,000 between the two. Yes. Yep. I looked yes. at the wrong number. Hmm. It's a small spreadsheet. Um, I am good with this moving forward. I appreciate them being realistic um, and making the cut where they could on the one project. Um, and yeah, reflecting just the reality of the situation. We understand. I'm good with this moving forward. Okay. Um, is anyone here? I know. I'll, I'll go to you, council member, here in just a second. I just want to. Is anyone here with Ripley Park? Because I believe we have questions. Yay or nay. If you are here, it's okay to unmute yourself and say, I'm here. If not, that's fine too. We understand. Okay. It doesn't appear, and if while we're talking, somebody hops on, they can they can speak up. Um, Councilmember Valdivia Alcala, I'll let you go first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have been to the location a couple of different times, and I know that they do good work in the community. I do have questions about some of the pricing uh, for some of their um, equipment. Um, they have a commercial stove listed for 5400 I don't know what type of commercial stove that is. Um, you know, I was looking at new stove, commercial stoves, anywhere from 1400 to 3000 because, again, these numbers looked a little bit new or high to me. And... Uh, the walk-in freezer um, rate is is high as well. So there's those questions. 
um, Kalea. The other, the other thing is, is, and the reason I'm asking this is that I, I feel like I come from the experience where I can ask it, and that is uh, buying new versus buying used. I am sure that we have any number of um, closed down restaurants in the area or beyond. Um, and I think that there's a lot to be said for being able to save money in that way. We are building an Oakland garden uh, in Oakland along with a kitchen to provide classes uh, to teach the community for free on how to um, not only grow their own produce, but how also to cook the produce for healthier family meals. And the folks that I work with have made overall the decision, even though we do have money in the bank, that we would rather buy used. Um, and that doesn't mean just something out of a junkyard somewhere. That means that we have to do our research when, when we're looking. And so I... My concern is is all new versus what can you do to help lower the price a little bit with used and has that ever come under consideration? So that would be it. And I would say until we get those answers, uh, I would be, you know, to let it move forward if you all are okay. The one question I was going to ask today that you can add to that list is, and this came directly from their follow-up questions, which I appreciated, especially their demographic breakdowns, um, is if any of these improvements allow for possible expansion of their services. Because it is a lot of new equipment and things that they clearly seem to need, but I'm curious if, if having new stuff that's larger allows them to increase their capacity um, to, to help people. So that, would, that was my question for today. So we will move that one forward, but certainly have some, some questions that need answered. All right, the next one I have is Positive Connections. Now, they had several, but I think they, did they do theirs together? No, I think they did them separate. I think they did them separate, yeah. So the first one we'll look at is the case management for HIV individuals. That request was for $40,000. It was reduced down to $27,000. Um, and so, um, is anyone here, actually, no, I didn't have a question. I will, oh, there were, their, their reduction, which I appreciated, um, was they had originally asked for some dollars to, for salaries, and that was the cut they made, so that the 27000 being requested is now focused just on the services, and to be honest, that's what pushed me into the can absolutely support it category, because I thought that was, a, that was an appreciated an appreciated cut on their part. Um, Councilmember Nager, any comments? No, I just support what you just said. Um, I also, this is just a general thing. I know that um, we talked about with using the these funds for another organization for upping their pay and then congratulating um, this organization and saying you're taking pay out of the equation, you're just going ahead and using the ARPA dollars for something else. I just want to go ahead and emphasize again, every application is different. We're just trying to figure out how we can best help your organizations. And so again, whenever you make the cuts and, or you make arguments for why something can't be cut, that's really, that makes the difference for us. It lets us know how we're able to go ahead and help you the best. So. That's just my general thought, and yes, I'm, I'm good with this moving forward. Thank you. Councilmember Valdiviacola? I'm in support. All right. We'll move that one forward. Mm -hmm. Get on my right color sheet here for my tags. All right. The next one up is Mirror Inc. This is a sober living program for inpatient and outpatient service. The original request was $600,000. The revised amount is $360,000. Councilmember Valdivia Alcala, any thoughts? Okay, let's I do just have some questions. Dial it back a minute. Look at the first amount that was asked for for a positive connection. Yes. I see right attached to it the larger requests. Okay. Do you see that? It might have been for the I mean, mobile unit, but it's not it until. On the same, is it on the same sheet? Yeah. I, no. yeah, I was about to say they're, they're it's together. Not, it's they're together. Not. 
on the same sheet. It's on a different, but keep turning the pages. So, oh, that's yeah. right. Okay. okay. Well, then let's then let's go ahead and have that discussion because they're all okay. right here, and that'll mess up my pile. So. <laughs> exactly. So so the next one was for prevention, education, and mobile testing unit. Original amount was one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Revised amount was one hundred and fifty thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars. All right. Okay. So is the question still towards me? Yep. Go for okay. it. Okay. Um. I think that this is greatly needed in the community. When we are talking about, and I've heard it for the past two years, the rise in, the rise in Shawnee County of sexually transmitted um, diseases, especially to our youth. And I think that it may be impacting more youth of color. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. And um, they were very intentional on in all the questions that they answered and their services um, and that they are willing to try for more diverse uh, volunteers and employees. Um, I I support this moving forward. Any thoughts, Councilmember Nager? She said it. I'm in. <laughs> uh, I agree. I, th I think the important component, uh, and this is probably a good time. I meant to mention this at the start. One of the questions we've had asked of us is, when does everybody else get to see these applications? Um, when we make our final recommendations to the full council, they will all be made public record and, and posted online so everyone can go through them. So, because I understand that part of the, the public as they hear us have these conversations doesn't have the 15 pages that we have of answers and responses and budgets and, and outlines of where these dollars will go. Um, but those will, these will all, all of them will be made public after that. So I, I meant to say, make that point earlier. Um, I agree with supporting this moving forward. I think the important part for everyone to understand the public as we have this conversation is while Positive Connections focus is HIV and AIDS related, this trailer and they've already had conversations with KDHE about expanding it to other concerns in our community ranging from hepatitis to syphilis, yes. chlamydia, gonorrhea, COVID. Um, so it's a very multi-purpose trailer. It's not just intended to be focused on that one, that one very important issue, but others. And for me, that's I think that's essential to this community to have that that flexibility and capability in our community. So I'm also a supporter of moving moving it forward. All right. So then I can go back up my chart here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now we're back to Mirror Inc. Oops. Um, is there anyone here from Mirror Inc. today, online or in person? I am here, and I'm so sorry. I'm in a doctor's appointment. You're so fine. Just, I just have one question. Sure. And, and, and I'm not sure we asked this, or I was a little confused. Um, so there are actually multiple locations I know across the state. I guess yes. my question is, are, will these dollars be spent exclusively on your Topeka operations if they were approved? exclusively in Topeka, yes. Okay, that, that was helpful, because I understood your budget breakdown, but I wasn't clear as to which facilities specifically, so that was an yes. important question for me. Um, Just the residential and outpatient offices in Topeka. Okay, well, and why we got you, since you could be calling to your doctor any minute, if anyone else has questions before we have any comment, I'll let them ask it. Just a quick comment, the what you all are doing in the way of DEI, implicit bias training, et cetera, what you're willing to do in the way of additional outreach uh, for black and brown communities, I just say that's commendable. And thank you. I say we move forward. Thank you. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Did you have any questions, Councilmember Nager? I did not. Okay. I I'll just make a comment. I, I am also supportive of moving this one forward. I will say this one fell into a little more difficult consideration on my part just from the standpoint of they have some additional resources some of the others don't. Now, that shouldn't be a negative because the work they're doing is certainly important and we want to sustain it. Um, but they have some billing options that others don't. And so, so I am supportive of moving it forward. I really appreciated their reduction. It really helped me to hear that these dollars, because that's our key mission, will be spent in Topeka. Um, so with those, I'm supportive of moving it forward. But I will say this one, this one took me a little longer to, to digest and, and consider before I was a little more supportive of it. Um, so with that, we will at this time go ahead and move it forward. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you, and good luck at the doctor. Mm. All right. Next one up is Cornerstone of Topeka. These, I believe, were, they did submit separately. 
Because I think they had several. And it showed up twice, but it was the same information both well, times. Well, you know, that's what I was going to say next. As I looked through them, they looked very similar. So I guess let's. Uh, Cornerstone has one, I believe, three in total. Um, so we will just look at those because, yes, some of their budgets are overlapping. Um, the first one was for transitional housing, which is in the amount of the original request was 229,256. They reduced that uh, by three thousand dollars to 226,256 dollars. Um, their next request was for construction of affordable housing duplex. Um, the original request was for 187,390 dollars. They were able to reduce that by seventy thousand dollars to 117 thousand dollars. Somehow they are the only people building things in Topeka who found some cost reductions in construction. God bless them. We should all hire them to build houses for us. Um, and the next one was in the amount of $306,064, which they were able to reduce by $172,000 to the amount of $133,961. And again, they were able to find some, some cost savings and I think some, some gap funding. Was that uh, for three houses? That was for the construction of three single-family affordable homes, correct. So, Councilmember Nager, any thoughts on these group? I, I do not have any further questions um, because they were packaged separately. Um, that duplex showing up earlier than the other two projects, I, my red flag went up. But between the projects, yes, the duplex only was reduced by three thousand dollars, but the other cuts ended up with them spending sixty-two percent on the other. Um, duplex and 44% on those three homes. Um, as we are looking at more affordable housing, I am good with all three of these applications continuing as um, with these cuts. All right, Council Member Valdeviacola. At this point, I'm I'm good with all three moving forward. Uh, I am too. I know, I'll just say, I mean, look, housing, especially affordable housing, especially transitional housing, are all things we are desperate for in this community. Um, the fact is Cornerstone is ready to build these. If they get the money tomorrow, they're going to be built by next week, and that's a hard one for me to pass on, <laughs> knowing that knowing the importance of that. And so I am also comfortable at this time moving those forward. Let me make my little marks here. Give me a second. I forgot my mouse, and I'm a terrible trackpad guy. I just can't, as you know, never been able to function very well, the trackpad. But I'm working on it. All right. The next one is the Open Arms Outreach Ministries uh, for a community oasis project, shelter, and food. The original request was for $150,000. The amended amount was for $135,000. Um, all right, so let me. Um, if, if we choose to move this one forward, I actually have a reduction of around $8,000 I would like to propose to make the new amount $127,000. And as you look through their budget and plan, um, they, they have everything in place, they have a budget, they've got construction plans and agreements and, and all that's great. But there was part of this which would go to a garden and a mural and a meditation area and some other things. And while those parts are great, um, that's an $8,000 price tag I'm not sure was intended for these dollars. And so if it moves forward, I would like to recommend we, we do it at the amount of $127,000 instead of the requested $135,000. Um, I have a question. Uh, sorry, my chart. Councilmember Nager, any thoughts? No, I'm good for Councilwoman's question. Thank you. Maybe it was just the way I was trying to read this, but I, I need to get an understanding of they want to, part of this initiative is to create, to create 10 supported housing units and 10 transitional housing units all through renovations. Um, so are they here? And can I ask them a couple of questions about that? Is anyone here from uh, Open Arms Outreach Ministries? 
who submitted that request? Charlene Johnson. Charlene Johnson. I'm looking. Look like it. Well, we can. Yes, yeah, let her know your follow-ups. So, not here. So. Sorry, I need a clarification on something there before okay. I said something wrong. <laughs> okay, but they're, are they not here? It doesn't look like they're here, so we will throw some questions at Kalea to, to type um, out there. Well, Kalea, I would just want to verify that 10 supported housing units and 10 transitional housing units, all through renovations, the application states. So I just want to confirm that because we have maps on here, it looks like plan maps. I would just like a little bit more clarity that all of this is actually um, in place. I found their um, expenses, their budgets a little bit challenging to read and so that would be my question to them just for more clarifications on how many rooms they actually have um yeah i mean i see something on here that just it had like carpet tile flooring for five rooms uh thirteen thousand dollars so i just need a little bit more and then we're good to move forward. I would say move them forward at this point would be my suggestion, but ask for that clarification. Thank you. Yeah, and I, and I had a couple questions, so I'll try to throw them out to you in a logic. I guess my first would be for them if they're, I guess, I guess if we make any reductions and someone wants to reject all of it, that'll be their choice as we move forward. But if they can work with the 127,000 uh, difference. But yeah, to the, to my other two questions were, they sent us a lot of paperwork, including from the different tracks, what I was confused about was whether they have actually secured and have ownership of these parcels that they are talking about um, doing this work on. It kind of looks like it, but it's it's there's a lot of paperwork here, and as you go through it, it's it then be, so so that's important to me because if they've secured them, that makes a big difference. Um, the second thing was they have in here. I don't think any of the dollars are going to it, but I guess. They have that their long-term plan is to build low-income tiny houses. Now, first of all, we have a problem. We still, it's still illegal to build a tiny house in the city of Topeka. Now, that's an us problem that we probably need to fix. We'll, with our new city manager, probably be having those conversations. But I, I guess the clarification I want is, is that phase independent of these 10 that they're talking about now? Or is that included in those 10? Because obviously that's a problem if, if their goal is to build five tiny homes tomorrow when we don't allow it in the city of Topeka yet. So hope, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. But with that, yes, it, we can get those answers to the questions, but we can we can move it forward to get some clarification on those. Move it forward at the 127? At the 127, okay. yep. Okay. All right. I know, we're going to get this next one. I was going to do it. All right. The next one is from Habitat for Humanity. Uh, it's for Affordable Housing Partnership and Construction. And again, I think this was their only request, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's right. They have a partnership in another. But, all right, sorry. Um, this was for the amount for Affordable Housing Partnerships and Construction. The original request was $475,000. The amended request is in the amount of $340,000. Um, um, I'll just say my thought is very similar to what I said about Cornerstone. They're established. They're ready to go. This is gap funding that's going to allow them to build some, some units, and we desperately need them. So I have no issues with moving this one forward. Uh, Councilmember Nager, thoughts? No issues. We can move this forward. Concur. All right. With that, we are going to move that one forward, and then we are going to take a five-minute break. Because some of us have had a lot to drink this morning. <laughs>
with that, we'll see y'all in five to ten minutes. That one would be me. <laughs> me too. Member Nager, are you there? All right. I'm back. I'm eating a snack, so if I do go off, it's all right. We hear. I'm still here. I just don't need everybody to watch me eat. If we so. hear munching, we'll know it's you. It's all right. Exactly. That's whenever staff says, "Turn off your microphone." At the other meetings, we can hear you eating a cracker. I'm like, "Oh, sorry, sorry." Yes, hungry. there will be no microphone. There will be no image but <laughs> I will. all right we back live the whole world got to hear our eating apple conversation sweet all right the next application up is the community resources council it's for internet labs for lmi communities there's actually a lot more to it than that than that very quick description but the original request was for two hundred and fifty thousand uh the follow-up revised amount was two hundred and twenty five thousand uh council member valdivia alcala Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I think it's it's going to be exciting when eventually we release this to community to see the depth and uh, complexity uh, in addition to thoughtfulness of in uh, any number of these applications. Uh, I think that this is a very intriguing proposal that I want to consider to move forward because, again, it brings the services to the people. Um, years and years ago, when I was first taught about outreach, uh, you know, uh, I had a mentor that would always tell me, you don't wait for the people to come to you, you go to the people. And this is an example of that, where you can have these hubs uh, that will be spread out across areas where they are most needed. Um, I think it's, it's worthwhile and... I think that the breakdown of the costs was very uh, good and easy to understand, for this woman to understand anyway. So I uh, encourage it to move forward. Uh, I agree. I think it checks a lot of our boxes that we've tried to focus on, not just who it's serving in the area that it's in, but it provides some connectivity. Mm -hmm. It provides some skills to some individuals um, that they can use later for some other development. Um, and so, yeah, I, I agree. I would, I would move this forward uh, for now. Councilmember Nager? I would also move this forward. I would like to see if there would be flexibility with donated furniture for the five lap locations. Um, $11,000, but like we get weekly emails with the city um, government that there's um, furniture up for grabs. I would like to see um, if there would be in-kind donations, something to go ahead and supplement them in this way. Um, is there anyone here from CRC online or in person? I don't see anyone in person. Yeah, I'm trying to find the name. No, I know. It's hard. Well, it's hard to tell. It may not be them. They may have sent a proxy. Mm -hmm. so. Chair? Yes. I would agree with that. I think I had asked about doing the used chairs and tables. I know that we're looking at five different hubs, so that may be a little bit of a stretch. And I know somehow tables and chairs do are hard to come by, but I think that if you know this is a community initiative, everybody go into their little part of community, see what they can you know get. I, I think it may be possible. So I agree, uh, Councilwoman Nager. So I think what I will do then on my fancy chart here is. And I guess this is the qu the question we can send to them is at this time I'm going to reduce the ask to two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars, which removes the eleven thousand dollars for furniture for the five lab co locations. And then the question you can ask them is, what is the impact of that on this grant request? And that would be. With that, we I will we will move it forward. I do have one more caveat with that um, chair. They have under that um, furniture. Um, printers and supplies. So if it doesn't end up being the whole eleven thousand dollars, I totally understand. Um, sure. Yeah, whenever I think furniture, I think the tables and the chairs. Um, if the printers, that seems like equipment to me. If it is not included in that eleven thousand, I would like to go ahead and figure out how they propose moving forward with that. 
So, so I think the question then should be to them, could they break down that cost, the cost of the 50 chairs and 50 tables versus the cost of the five printers and printing supplies over that period of time? And that would, that would give us a more realistic number then. Chair. Oh, who said that? I heard a voice. This is, this is Teresa Sal from Community Action. And I wanted to let you know that Mary Thomas is trying to log on. Oh, but okay. she did say that they would be willing to take or to use used furniture. Okay, Excellent. great. And I'm trying to help her get logged on. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. And I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, please come back around if you have questions from me. Great. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what did I have? Sorry. Hold on. I have paperwork out of order. Yeah, give me a second. <coughs> put it there all right the next one I have on my list is is the Shawnee County Medical Society health access original request was for twenty five thousand dollars the next you have something? Huh? what is it the Shawnee County Medical Society health access original request for twenty five thousand amended request was for twenty thousand okay um, so I, I, I'll go first on this one for me, this is a no, and I feel bad. This is one of those that cuts a little. My, my two concerns were uh, I'm disappointed that the county, with all the money that they got and that they seem to be spending on things, can't provide their people $25,000 to fill this gap. That is not on this organization's. That's just Duncan sending a message to his county, his disappointment. I do not put that on the Shawnee County Medical Society. They're doing the best they can. I know they've asked for some of those funds, and I know the county has funded other things, but... Um, but that's not my sole reason. My real reason, concern is that the majority, if not all these fundings, is focused on um, salaries, not actual services. And so for me, that makes this a no. Um, but I'm willing to be swayed any other way if, if my other committee members have any thoughts on that. So Councilmember Nager? I am for moving this forward because it's, um, it is a need in our community. And... If there's a way that we can go ahead and help, I would like to. Um, I'm good with the twenty thousand, um, but I absolutely understand your concerns. So that's where I am right now. You know, I concur when it comes to the county. Too bad nobody's here from the county. Um, I see a lot is going to parks and renovating tent camping areas. That's all good because those are all quality of life issues. Um, you know, I think the most that I would do if we would move it forward is um, perhaps half doing our due diligence as Topeka and then, you know, seeing if um, the county is up to, up to taking up that yoke of responsibility to this agency as well. That's all I have to say. So what I will do at this time is move it forward with the $20,000 amount with the asterisk that if we need to shave five, 10,000 here or there as we did with that other project, we will we will put that, uh, list that one as one. So mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the asterisk. <coughs> if I may, sorry, yes. um, I believe the Community Resources Council submitted both of their responses together, so their um, more affordable housing for LMI individuals is connected to that first application, that first. Okay, that's probably why I had a second page that I, uh, So okay. they're all together? Yeah, some of them submitted it together, and we tried to separate it, but <gasps> yeah. oh, it's it kind of hard it. to do that with PDFs, I, yeah. I no, you're it. good. Yeah, no, it's down on this, uh, there it on is. this form right here. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the confusion. No, you're good. Well, it's, it wasn't that. We, we were going to get to it on the chart, but we can go ahead and go to them now before we get. It's all an organized fancy chart. It's all good. Um, let's see here. All right, so then we will go back to the second uh, Community Resource Council request, which is for affordable housing for LMI individuals. Uh, that original request, which remains the same amount, is in the amount of $900,000. 
Um, <coughs> Council Member Valdivia Alcala. I know that they did not ask for a reduction. Um, I think that because I'm going to say definitely move this forward, that you know there may be future dialogue about that. The whole point, and again, when folks get to see these applications, is that within this period of time, um, 24 houses in four years is what the goal is. The goal is also that they are going to be taking up um, not rehabbing houses, in my opinion, that truly rehabs a house that does not give every single bell and whistle an amenity, but makes it sound, stable, safe, and affordable. And I think that that's really what we need to focus on is the affordability um, of this. They... CRC specifically states they're also not in this to become landlords. They have a program that is set up that where they are partnering with Invista and other organizations, including HCCI, to help get these families on the road to own the homes themselves. And they talk about concerns that we should all have, the uh, terrible abuses that have with contract for deeds, which often are impacted uh, black and brown communities. They also talk about the care that we have to have in our LMI communities about moves towards gentrification. And with the this very detailed program about what the, they are set up for and what they see that they can do uh, and the partnerships that they have already established and have worked on just a small amount of houses, but what they are doing is very intentional and I... Uh, I support it. Councilmember Nager. This is, I support what they're doing. This is at our this point our biggest ask, the nine hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And while there was no reduction um, initially presented um, at that question. What was described later was basically a modified budget of instead of doing six houses a year, if you did 500 houses, four, three, two, one. I would like to go ahead and see what flexibility we have. Um, if we had more money, I would love to do the six a year. Um, moving forward, I would like to go ahead and consider doing fewer units a year in order to go ahead and make sure that we're working with the finite amount of financial resources that we have. So that would be my um, qualification for moving forward. So I, I know they're here to answer questions, but I think that's a more detailed answer. So let's send them a question that basically says, if you modified this to one or two less homes a year, what would that budget look like? I will say uh, it is our largest ask. But I have said this many times as we've gone through this process, shovel-ready projects matter. Checking a box for me that we need, which is housing, which we are desperate for in this community. I mean, if you look at the top three problems we have in this community that, that are impacting people's lives, it is up in that top three, and you can shuffle those issues around however you want. Um, so I will be supportive. I would like to see their amended plan if they can provide one, but I am still supportive of providing this funding because it brings homes in the next four years into our community at a level, from my perspective, that nobody else is really doing uh, uh, for, for, these, for the individuals who would move into these homes. So, so uh, yes, I am also supportive of moving it forward, uh, but I would, we would appreciate that updated information to help us make a final decision. Back here into my box. Da, 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 there we go. All right. All right. The next one I have is, is uh, prevention and resiliency services to expand services, software, other repairs. The original request was for three hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. The amended request was for one hundred and five thousand four hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Um, the way they broke this down was to essentially provide us 
Um, am I looking at the right one? Yes, okay. Um, sort of what their yearly budget was, which was about 52749 This would help them sustain some programs for the next couple years. And then moving forward, um, they gave us some flexibility, I guess, <laughs> by breaking it down by year to decide two years, three years, four years, whatever amount we wanted to, wanted to do. But their amended request was 105498 So, um, Council Member Valdivia Alcala, did you go first? Um, there were a number of questions that I posed um, to them, and I, I want to thank them for being, like, so transparent. Um, in addition to reduction in budget, um, the questions that were related to inclusivity, you know, DEI related, et cetera, their employees, their volunteer base, et cetera, um, they said that it's something that they needed to explore and that they were willing uh, to explore. I had concerns because of the low amount, 70% uh, I think of the students of, that they serve uh, were white students and while I know that that need is there when we're talking about trying to reduce you know, alcohol, drugs, the total ravaging that we have with fentanyl and with opioids, those reach all kids across all ages, across all colors. And so they have made the commitment in their goals with this particular money to do more outreach to minority students, which I think is huge. They serve a wide range um, of zip codes. Uh, they're used, they are open to doing what they need for uh, the Spanish speaking uh, services. And so I think at this point, it's just getting down to, you know, um, exactly how much we fund. But I, I do encourage that they move forward. Councilmember Nager, any thoughts? I support moving forward. Uh, I do too. I appreciate. Uh, as always, tells it never hurts to ask. But thank you for removing the request to pay for your parking lot. I get it. I know that's important. Um, but that was going to be my one of my initial concerns with the application that is now moved and again the ask now focuses on the actual services provided not that I understand some of those capital improvements are necessary so as it's a pretty significant reduction I, I uh, also am okay with it moving forward at the request for one hundred and five thousand four hundred and ninety eight dollars right. next one is Doorstep Inc., rental assistance, daycare, and other bills of LMI. The original request was for $181,000. The new request is for the amount of $133,000. Uh, Council Member Nager, any thoughts? None except for I appreciate them going ahead and looking in where they can make the cuts. I am supportive of this moving forward. Councilmember Valdivia Alcala. Um, I, I think that it can move forward. I, I'm looking at the the cost, you know, for the hygiene kits, and I'm thinking. <coughs> Gosh, you know, these are such base base needs. I mean. How many citizens out there do we have that can't meet basic hygiene, you know, needs? And that's really, um, it's really disturbing. They seem to help in a multiplicity of ways from, you know, phone bills, hygiene kit items, food purchases, uh, daycare funds, auto services, you know, folks not even able to pay for auto repairs, utility assistance, rent assistance, etc. cetera. Um, I say that we go ahead and move forward. So I think one of the toughest things we've had to navigate through these, these applications is capital improvement requests. Mm -hmm. And for me, the distinction between a capital improvement request is 
What is it something that certainly you probably need, but can still kind of move forward without versus it actually is very necessary to reduce your overall costs and move your program forward and make sure it continues to exist, right? So I guess my suggestion with this proposal is there's a $12,000 request to replace uh, lighting to LED. I understand why that's important, but I would like to see that removed and reduce the request to $121,000 by removing that, um, which still focuses on services, but I guess that would be my, I'd throw that out to the committee for consideration. I'm, I'm not trying to nickel and dime people, but I'm trying to fit as many organizations into this thing as possible, and, and that was one that I saw where, where I thought we could make it an alteration. Councilmember Valdivia Alcala. I would agree with that, but I'm wondering if we couldn't move that money since they had to take a cut. They reduced everything with, you know, food, hygiene. They reduced their amounts all the way down. I would Could, be fine with that if you want to spread that across the mm -hmm. other asks evenly or however we yes. want to do that. So yes. leave it at the 133000 but yes. I, I guess if we want to make that a question to them, are you okay with that and would, is there a category they'd like to apply it to? Since this all has to be tracked, I'd like them to make that choice um, since later we'll, we'll have to hold them to where they wanted to put it. Um, we, we are okay with that. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, well, just send us the revision to where you'd like to stick it later, and then we'll we'll be able to have that when we uh, review it in October. Thank we'll you. Will do. Thank you very much. All right. The next one is Stormont Vale expand blocks child care, add a second facility. Original request was for one million dollars. They reduced that amount to five hundred thousand. As I mentioned earlier. Child care is a big one for me. As I said, I serve on a regional task force. Uh, before I say the things they're not going to want to hear, I want to be very clear. Stormont Vale does a hell of a lot of good in this community. They serve a lot of people. We could not function in many ways without the services they provide to this community and the health care that they give us. Uh, I've been to their emergency room more times than I want to uh, count. I asked a very important question, though, in our follow-ups. And... It has been my understanding that they are transitioning their facilities to employee-based as opposed to community and employee-based. That is probably the absolute right decision for them to make because they are trying to recruit and retain employees like everybody else. Um, full disclosure, my now nine-year-old spent five years going to building blocks before he went to kindergarten, so I have nothing but appreciation for their programs and what it provided my child for five years. But the question I asked was, if you accept this money, are you willing to retain any percentage guarantee for the citizens of Topeka who are not employees of Stormont Vale? And the answer was no. They did say if there are open slots left afterwards that employees didn't fill, they would open those up to the community. And I appreciate that, and I hope they continue to do that. But without a guarantee of some slots to the community, I don't feel like it's responsible for us to provide them dollars to build a facility that's not open to some measure to everybody. And again, that's not a knock on them. They are doing the right thing for them and for their employees and their organization. But I don't think it fits in what these ARPA dollars were intended from our viewpoint. So that is my concerns and thoughts with, with providing these dollars. Uh, Councilmember Nager, any thoughts? You are on mute. I am on mute. Um, <laughs> I appreciate those thoughts. That was one of that was what I was having the most trouble with is how do we go ahead and make sure that these public dollars are being amplified in a public way? Um, I know that Stormont. I I've heard it quoted that they are the second biggest employer in Topeka. And so that was the after the state. I don't know if that's correct. Um, if somebody knows the actual numbers, please correct me. Um, but they are a big employer in our community. And so that was what was edging me towards supporting this. Um, but hearing your concerns, um, Chair, that those were the same con concerns that I had. And um, Ugh. I I 
I am good with saying that they will not move forward at this time due to that um, stipulation. Thank you, Councilmember Valdivia Alcala. Without belaboring the point, I mean, we all know how much child care is needed, right? Um, I had trouble with no spots being open or guaranteed to be open outside of their employees. And also, it's the thing about, set aside that it was Stormont Vale asking for the money. Let's just look, businesses, successful businesses, and knowing that we are in such a state a crisis for child care and knowing that most likely that there is money in coffers to be able to make that happen uh, without putting more kind of infringement on this small amount of dollars that we have. Believe me, I wish it was 45 million instead of 10 million. Uh, but $10 million, and my understanding is that those should go as deep into community as possible, where possible. And those that are able to take up that yoke, that they take it up and understand the intentionality that comes with trying to spread this so thin. So I agree with you on this, that it should not move forward. All right, so with that, we will come in the not moving forward pile. The next one is the City of Topeka Housing. This one is should it's still on the list, although it shouldn't have been, which is fine. We, I've talked with the city manager. We, we've found some money through 2024, and we'll, we'll beg and scratch uh, beyond that to, to find money for impact avenues. But since there were some concerns about the application, just, just felt it was the right thing to just move it on uh, since it was half a million dollars. So... Uh, we will we will go we will take that one out. Um, it's not included. All right, we did pause. It. So the next one I have is sent uh, mental health services for Highcrest. The original request was for fifty thousand uh, dollars. The amended request was for thirty thousand uh, dollars. Councilmember Valdivia Alcala, any thoughts? Um, I'll go with the majority on this. I mean, if if you know, I I think it can move through to the next level. Uh, I'm also okay with moving it forward. Councilmember Nager. At this time, I don't have any further questions. I'm good to go ahead and move it forward. All right. All right. The next one is Child Care Aware of Eastern Kansas, expansion of current child care services. The original request was $1.53 million, a little more than that. The amended mm -hmm. request was for $980,588,000. All right. I know. I know. Everyone keeps saying he keeps saying he cares about child care, and then he keeps cutting these programs that do child care. Although that's why I said there's others in here that provide child care that I'm going to fund. I have two major concerns. The first is, and we sent fairly detailed questions to Child Care Aware, and with respect, they didn't answer half the questions. That's a problem for me because these were very direct. They weren't ambiguous questions. They, they could have provided some answers. And so, um, so that, that I, I had it was a red flag for me. The other issue I have is it does through this create positions, um, but they can't guarantee that they're all going to be based in Topeka. Some of them they guarantee are, others are to be determined. And as we have said many times, these dollars are for Topeka. They have to be spent, and you have to guarantee me they are going to be spent in Topeka. This application does not provide that guarantee. And so for those two reasons, I get that it's a big request. I, I, again, I, I know we sound like a broken record. It's not a justification. You're all important, and you all matter. And these are tough decisions as we are two and a half plus million dollars over our dove. So there's going to be some no's. Um, but for me and those concerns, this is a no for me, despite the good work that I know they do, not just in our area, but, but across the state of Kansas. Um, Council Member Valdivia Alcala. Um, looking at their budget, and one of the questions that we asked them, um, has GTP as part of, because uh, Child Care Aware 
has been involved in a lot of meetings in public meetings with GTP as part of Momentum 2027. Have they been offered to fund part of the 1.5 million? Uh, if not, why not? Um, because out of this, 300,000 requested is for building support for child care and business community. Um, and the bottom line is, is that no money has overtly been asked uh, by GTP. Um, but what this program is going to entail is part of this program is going to entail is going into businesses in a nutshell telling them the importance of why child care is needed and then offering them an incentive to buy into that. And I'm just going to be really blunt in that, especially our large corporations. If you're doing this already, kudos to you and thank you very, very much for caring about those that work for you, which is caring for their children. And for those that have not, but that know that they can afford to do so, my hope is that Momentum 2027 and whoever the players are in this can really have those needed and intense dialogues to understand this intersects in so many different ways we could talk about it all day. And there has to come a time where the urgency of family is placed along just as much as the urgency of making the, the bottom line and for shareholders, stakeholders, et cetera. Because if you don't have a healthy workforce or if you don't have a satisfied workforce, you're going to keep losing that workforce. And we know that that's what ha is happening in this post-COVID uh, even if it is post-COVID times, I don't know that it is. So I would, this is not something that I feel I can support at this time. It would be wonderful uh, to see how this initiative could really expand out without having to pay somebody to support child care. Um, so that's where I'm at with this. Thank you. Councilwoman Nager, any thoughts? Um, mine were just, I was going to go ahead and, um, move this forward with the ask that, um, we work with GTP, but we do have a representative on Zoom and I'll yield my time to her. Thank you for the opportunity to um, <clears throat> respond at this moment. Um, first of all, um, to the chairman, um, I thought the response was clear that this project was solely focused on the city of Topeka. We are a large agency that serves 33 counties. Um, so if the organizational chart and some of those supplemental materials that you requested um, weren't clear that this was a Topeka focused pro project. Um, I apologize for that. Um, and I also just wanted to say, I did respond to every single question that was asked. So I'm wondering, maybe some pages are missing or something. So I apologize for that. I would be very um, happy to remove those business incentives if that is your direction. Um, that was one of several components of this, and I hate to see the entire project stopped um, just because of that component. But um, if you have other questions, I would be more than happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will just say it, it, it was actually very clear. It says new positions, eight positions, and it says location TBD. It's very clear that it doesn't, speci and others specifically say Topeka. So I, I do want to say it, it's clear um, that they do not specifically say in Topeka. Um, she's on mute. Oh, that's fine. I'm, no, I'm just letting you know that that, just so she knows that, that that's the sheet. Uh, she here's what I, I'm willing to do for now. I'm willing to reduce that by the 300, what was that, 330,000. And we will resend some of these questions and give you an opportunity for some clarification uh, that we can take a look at in October, particularly since Council Member Nager would like to, to have some follow-up on that. Um, but, I, but I will say my concerns still stand. 
Um, but I, I will be open to, to at least looking at those follow-up questions. And Me as well. well. What was that? Do we, what was that amount? I, I know it's in here. Do you remember what it was? I thought it was. I, want to make sure. I thought it was three. I have this thousand. fancy spreadsheet. I got to feed the spreadsheet. It's three. Um, it says three thousand requests for building support for child care and business community. Three thirty-eight five seventy. The amount directed to businesses was $75,000 a year times three years. Okay. Thank you. So that's 225. All right. So 985 88 minus is a new amount of 755 Thank you very much for those uh, follow-ups. Okay. The next one is First Congregational Church of Topeka for trauma, trauma care and shelter for teens, LGBTQ safety, and some other additional services. Original request was for 450000 Follow-up request was for 340000 Councilmember Nager, why don't you start on this one? I would be supportive of this moving forward. It seems like their plan is nicely laid out and the majority of those funds are going to buying a house to go ahead and support that transitional um, living during that transitional period um, for these youth. So I am supportive of moving forward with the cut. Council member Valdiviacola. Okay, somehow on that, I was under the impression that they had a space already where they were going to house the youth. And so once we got the budget and saw the 300,000 now amended request to 250,000 for the house, um, I, had, I need more clarity and I need more information on the house, rooms, et cetera, because it has transitional house, cost to purchase home, including all related expenses to serve as a transitional home for LGBTQ and homeless young people. Amended request, 250,000. I just feel like I need more information than that. Is, is anyone here um, from First Congregational? Yes, I'm here. So can you clarify to us, is there already a home or facility secured, or would part of these dollars be used to secure that facility? The uh, request is for purchasing a home that is for the transitional house. We will not be housing anyone at the, at the uh, center. The center is donated space by the church where the hub of activities will be happening, but they are two separate spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, because Braided Haven is its own it, its own 501c3 that will be operated independently, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So this is a partnership. The church is providing the space for the center as an in-kind, and uh, but the home has yet to be purchased, and we are asking for that investment from the city. Gotcha. I have additional questions. Yep. Um, as far as the home, how many youth, how many people is it going to house? We are hoping to house about eight people at a time. And do you already have housing in mind that you're going to, that you're looking at? No, we are looking throughout the, the city for the appropriate place. Um, do you have more of a breakdown when you have just the lump sum of two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a house do you have a breakdown into that two hundred fifty thousand being a little bit breaking it down more i can provide you with that i would uh, like to see that also this transitional housing let's see there will be an adult on staff that's yes. part of the staff request. Okay, mm -hmm. and you also talk about funds from ARPA 
and this is your initial application, funds from ARPA will be used to make facility improvements to the available space, including adding shower facilities. Where are those going to be added? There is a, a room at the, uh, at the church that has a large closet behind it. It already has plumbing there, and we are going, and it is adjacent, it is attached adjacent, there's a door. That will become a, a shower facility. So many of the people that we will be helping are homeless, and while they may or may not fit into the, they may fit into some of the emergency homes that we are recruiting at this time, they may not even want that, but they need a place where they can go and shower, have some case management about looking at where they can access resources. So that facility room will become a shower laundry room. Okay, uh, thank you. If I could, yeah, if we could just get a deep, a better breakdown on that 250, that would be mm -hmm. appreciated and I could support moving it on with that. Be happy to provide it for you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, answers. Um, yeah, I'll just say before we, I'm supportive of moving this on, just a couple things. Uh, first of all, it's one of the few, if not only, applications left that specifically deals with this issue, which I think does matter. It's not the only reason, but I, I think, but I think one of the reasons it's still here is, I know through the first round we got programs that we thought were great, but they were new programs that had no sustainability plan. They, they kind of gave us the, hey, if you give us this money, then we promise we'll fundraise after that. Um, I appreciate that while this is a newer program, it has a sustainability component to it that shows us it can last beyond the ARPA dollars. And I think that's, a, a, that's key to me to supporting uh, these programs because sustainability is a, is a big one for us to make sure they, they last. So I also am supportive of moving it forward at this time. Chair, I do have one more question. Yes, council member. Thank you. Um, Barbara, okay. with the ARPA funds, and buying, purchasing this house, are you all dependent on having the ARPA funds in hand to make this purchase of the house, or how how is that going down? To be honest, I haven't worked through all of that, but I have this assessment that probably we would need to have that commitment before the ARPA funds would be available to us. We are looking to make sure that we have our down payment. Okay. Uh, secured through some of the funds that are that are unrestricted to ensure that we can work together on making that purchase. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. That's all I had, Chair. Thank you. All right. The next one I have is the Salvation Army of Topeka. Individuals facing a housing or utility shutoff. Request original request and still requested is twenty five thousand um, dollars. Councilman Council Member Valdivia Alcala. Sorry, I can go. Uh, <laughs> I can go. <laughs> um, I don't know if the Salvation Army is on, but I would like to see a sample form of their application for um, the money that they give out, that they're planning to give out for this this twenty five thousand. Shelley, are you on? Yes, I am on. <laughs> Council person. Do you have an application that you can provide us? I can get you a sample of one, yes. Okay. Um, thank you, Shelley. I would say I can see this moving on, but I need to see that application. Um, I agree. I mean, I appreciate your response of our budget for 2023 hasn't been approved yet. Um, but I would guess you could still provide us some better information because because that was my issue. I, I don't still quite understand. Um, I know you stuck 45 households with a rent average of 547. I'm still very confused as to how this would be distributed. So I think that form would help um, help me also make a better better informed decision on this. Councilmember, okay. I'm good with moving forward with this with um, the questions that you have already asked. Sorry, hold on. See, I told you, trackpad. It's my kryptonite. All right. The next one is Florence Crittenden Services of Topeka, uh, training for mental health staff. Um, 
Original request was for $250,000. The amended request was for $151,000. They actually sent a third option for $153,000. Um, and they, they break it down as to why that $2,000 is a little distinct difference. Um, uh, let's see here. So I, I guess I'll go first on this one. Um, I'm supportive of this moving forward. I would like to see it at the, the 153 as opposed to the 151. Again, I know it's a small difference. Um, I think what's important to note about this program is that most of these dollars or a chunk of these dollars go towards training individuals who then they can sustain in the program long term, but you have to train them first for a period and pay for that before you can then qualify for Medicaid dollars and other dollars. And so, uh, to me, what's key about this program is we're helping them put people into a program that's very sustainable and, and people that we need in this community to address mental health services. So it has that sustainability component for me that, that I thought was important. So I would support moving this one, one forward. Uh, Councilmember Nager? I absolutely agree with that. Move it forward. All the same points. You read my mind. Uh, Councilmember Valdeviacola? Um. I think the point that you're referring to in the application is the program we're proposing focuses on mental health workforce development for providers in Topeka. Before Topeka can increase capacity and service delivery of mental health services, we must first invest in strategies to develop and retain adequate mental health workforce. So I do agree with that. I do have concerns, and I stated it in the application questions about their low percentage of they serve almost 72% of white community with 3% of African American and 12% of Latino population. So um, I don't know if I saw this question answered or not. Um, they do not have outreach materials in Spanish, which I hope that they would be open to getting. And I w was wanting to know if they took families with no insurance. Is anyone here to answer that? Is anyone that? here from Florence Crittenden? Doesn't look like it. Can we put that down as a question, Kalea, to see if they mm -hmm. accept individuals with no insurance? Yep. Additionally, um, how are their referrals received? And if I can get those answers, then I would say yes, let's move it on. I'd like to add a question to that. Would you ask them if they know what the cost would be for them to generate materials in Spanish? Okay. Thank you. I mean, at some point, if we have dollars, mm -hmm. we might as well. Well, cause and, <laughs> and Chair, just let me say to that, you can get a translation service for like four ninety nine a month. And I use Translate, and I can put whatever I want in there, and I can, it'll translate in any number of languages, obviously. <coughs> then I, cu I cut it, and I copy it on to whatever I'm creating, and you can have it there. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it actually, if you do the work to research it, it can actually be a lot cheaper than what you would initially think. So, thank you, Chair. All right, the next one are two applications together, essentially. I mean, they're separate, but same program. Breakthrough House, one was for a payee program to help those in financial crisis. Original request, $8,300. Amended request, $7,300. Uh, the second request was for a residential program for mental health. Original request, $750,000. The follow-up was uh, revised was for $625,000. Councilmember Nager, I'll let you go first. I didn't have any direct questions. I am good with moving forward with both programs. Um, my concern with the first one is, and I understand, look, I get it. It's a technological world. You can't do some of the things without technology. Um, but the 7300 is primarily for the software and programs to do that. Uh, I get it. I also think it's a duplication of other services that we are covering through many of these applications. 
That's no fault of their own. It just is what it is. I'm not as supportive of these $7,300. Um, I do have a question. Is there someone here from Breakthrough House? Hi, Mr. Chairman. This is Sheena Ward. I'm currently serving as interim director okay. with Breakthrough House. Nothing like being the interim. Lucky you. I know. I've been there, <laughs> yes. done that. I understand. Thank Here's you my for primary caring. question on the residential program application. Yes. I, I'm not sure, and maybe we didn't ask this, so this, so I, so I will. I don't understand the plan for sustaining the salary increases or the creation salary creations that are being made in this program. I understand that this will pay for them for a few years, but I really don't, I'm curious as to what the plan is then to continue to fund those positions once the ARPA dollars are no longer there. Mr. Chairman, we're currently working with the state of Kansas through the Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Services to receive ongoing support and shore up some of the services that we're currently providing because we have been underfunded for quite some time. Um, we actually have never recovered since the Great Recession of 2009. We're, we're kind of getting to that level and then here comes the pandemic um, creating all of these needs. We are partnering with the state and a number of agencies in the community to not only get shored up, but to expand our services. Um, we asked for funding from the state um, and so we're expecting to receive that funding as well as the ongoing support. But in the meantime, um, we ran into issues with one of our properties that was um, currently occupied um, where it was deemed uninhabitable and we had to move the residents out of that property. Um, and that's, you know, has only exacerbated our issues, which is why we are now coming to you um, understanding that the state, of course, also just like you, has limited resources to spread around to a lot of entities, and we would it's will be hard pressed to receive additional support, but beyond what we've already asked for. Gotcha. Okay, no, I appreciate that. That that gives me some much needed context. There is a plan that makes me feel better, and, and I understand. Yes, sir. No, that's good. So, share. Yes, definitely. We, we we certainly wouldn't want to pay people additional funding for you know a couple of years, or excuse me, additional wages for a couple of years, and then be in a position where we cannot continue that. Um, we've expressed that uh, this dire situation that we're in to the state, and so while that ARPA money that we've applied for would be one time, um, our relationship with KDADS, um, they do understand the need to continue that portion of funding that would be for ongoing support after that. And they're looking at different um, grants uh, to provide that to us. Great. Thank you. Council Member Valdez thank you. Um, So thank you, Chair. That's looking at the 75000 right? The increased wages for house managers and direct support staff? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they removed in their request some of that, like the, eliminated the maintenance position, but some of it's for some salary increases to get them up to a okay. better wage for those individuals. My, my concern is that I just need to see more of a breakdown. These are large chunks of money that are on the projected budget, even if some of them have been cut out. You know, maintenance position, 70000 So, okay, maybe that was cut out. But deferred maintenance, current rehab and repair projects, 150000 I personally don't feel comfortable on pushing anything forward that doesn't have more of a breakdown. And so, Ms. Ward, I'm wondering if we could get uh, a more complex, well, I don't mean really complex, but a more detailed budget than what's been provided. Council member, we definitely can provide that information to you. I can tell you while we, the emphasis is on deferred maintenance because we have, like, like I said, one of our properties has been deemed uninhabitable. What we are putting into maintenance annually is just simply insufficient to cover the amount of repairs that are needed for our properties. Um, but it's not just maintenance that has been deferred. Um, increasing the annual amount that is put into those project those properties, but also to kind of do some remodeling, not just for Tyler House, but the other properties as well. And we have eight properties um, that we're wanting to do some remodeling. These are very old properties that we've had for you know many years. 
Um, and so we have, I don't, I looked and could not find anything on record where there was been, where there's been any resources put into any sort of remodeling. And I'm not talking about making it, you know, grandiose by any stretch of the imagination, but just some remodeling to get them kind of up to speed so they're not, they don't look blighted. I understand that and I appreciate that. And, Our and I think that that's, that's looking, you know, looking forward in a good way. I, again, would just like to see more of a breakdown. On, okay. you. Do you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Could you say that again? Because I didn't hear the first part of what you said. Um, I said thank you for that, and it's appreciated uh, because I think that what you're looking at is something that needs to be done when you're talking deferred maintenance. But even then, we should be able to get you know a little bit more breakdown. Where would that be going specifically? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and, and so and again, and, we would certainly provide that to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Absolutely. So thank you for the time. There's three deferred maintenance projects on this list, and so since you're here, I'll ask you this, but I will also have Kalea send it in the follow-up, and they are the current rehab and repair projects, the Tyler House only, and then the increased deferred maintenance budget for all the, what we'll call the randomness of, of organizations. Um, so if you could just yes, provide, sir. yeah, if you could just provide then the, the g general breakdown of what some of those costs are within those budgets, that would be appreciated. Um, the second thing I'm gonna ask, and don't read too much into this, I swear, if you could prioritize those, it would also be appreciated. Um, we certainly will, and, and I, I, I um, sympathize with the work that you guys have to do spreading this money around. So I will definitely try my best to prioritize these. I can tell you there it's, it's going to be a very difficult task because they're all so important, but I will, I will do my best. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so we will move forward the, that one. What is the council or the committee's feeling on the first one for $7,300? I would say move forward and just take the whole fine. package. Okay. And I would be fine with moving forward too. Do we have to extend the meeting or do another one? We don't have to extend the meeting, do we? We said it was two hours, but I think we're here. It's a public meeting, right? That's not like a drop dead. That was our, so we, we believe it was our hopes and dreams to be done by noon and our very unrealistic expectations that we could do it. So that means we're gonna continue with the meeting because we've got like half our binder left. Yep. The good news is a couple of those are really big, but we're actually closer than you think. Okay. Some of these I don't think as we get to will take as much discussion. Um, famous last words. Would you like to take a break? No. Okay. Does the city manager need to leave because he's hungry or has actual work to do? Or <laughs> <laughs> Any of those options are fine. <laughs> um, I, I do think we have some issues with room availability. What time do they need this After room? 1 o'clock. All right. Well, we'll see how the next hour goes, and then we'll be where we're at. Okay. I think we – I really do think there's a couple on here that – it was not gonna, I know. We'll see. Um, the next one is – no, hold on. The next one is Love Fellowship Church. A daycare for congregants program, uh, original and revised requests stand at twenty-five thousand dollars. Sorry, let me grab that. Um, where am I at on my list? Councilmember Nager, any thoughts on this one? This was one where. Um, there weren't any cuts that were proposed. There might be some things that we can go ahead and work on them with and um, partially go ahead and fund with more discussion. Um, it's also $25,000 in comparison to the $10 million. So I think that if there was some flexibility for them um, to go ahead and work together and partner and see how we can help them um, and look at a reduced budget, I would be fine with moving forward. Um, my only concerns with it were there was a lot of um, our goal is we're working on we want to do this as opposed to we are doing this we are going to make this ratio happen we are opening these spots up to the, I mean yeah. th those to be honest were, were my concerns it's it's similar to some we've talked about before there's a lot of great intent here there's a lot of great ideas I, man this is one that 
I get it. The heart's in the right place. I think it's doable in the long term. But for me at this point, I just had too many concerns to, to be able to want to move it forward. But I'm certainly open to, to doing that if, the, if there's other additional questions everybody has. Um, Chair, I was stated, so there's no actual guarantee they can raise the other $45,000, which still remains my concern. My concern if we said yes to this initiative that we – they did not provide specific sources where they are going for the other money. I also do not see that they actually have any money in pocket. So unless we can get more answers on those, do they have any in their church fund that they're going to be putting towards this? Um, what is the... Yeah, who are they going to for additional funding? When do they expect that those requests will be um, denied? I, there's too many loose strings here. I have concerns about the money would just end up sitting there. If they can answer those questions, I'd be willing to pass it on. Did you get those, Clay? Yep. Okay, well, we will ask those questions and take a look at it again. The next one is Vallejo Behavioral Health Assertive Community Treatment Program. Uh, the request is $683,726. Um, that is the same additional request. No, no alterations were made. Um, I mean, in short, I, I'm supportive of this. Um, I, I don't know if this is the one. I believe there was something within this that they did look back on and say they might be able to make a trim. I probably need more follow-up with, with them. Um, Basically, I got a text, <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't enough information to, I don't know if, uh, Bill Persinger Chair or somebody from Vallejo, are you still on here? Morning, Chairman and uh, members of the committee, staff. Yeah, I'm here. This is Bill Persinger. I <coughs> would be there, <coughs> excuse me, I'd be there in person, but I'm uh, quarantined with the COVID and oh, working at home. Been there. And, God bless. Good luck. Yeah. Well, pretty mild so far. Thank you for your concern. And. Uh, of course, my time is yours. Uh, we are prepared to uh, respond to any and all questions this morning, including are we willing to take a cut? Uh, the answer is yes, most definitely. Um, our answer to number three um, was really uh, intended to give the committee, and hopefully if it gets that far, the council, uh, an opportunity to set the budget up or down and to fund as, as you know, up to like five teams. And and I've, I've read our response over and over again several times. Makes pretty good sense to, you know, to, to me. But what I failed to have done was to give you a dollar amount by which we would take a reduction. And so uh, being a team player and wanting to be of service, um, you know, we'll, we'll do what it takes to uh, – well, my computer just turned itself off too. There it is. Uh, we'll do what it takes to fit within the budgetary constraints that you have and, and the number of – super big priorities you have in front of you. So short answer, yes, we can amend our budget. Can, can you send us then an, an adjustment for what the budget would look like if it was, this is asked for five teams, if it was four teams and if it was three teams? Can do. I don't think going below three teams does any good because then it becomes not as effective, but those, those well, are two good budgets to see. Thank you for that. Yeah, we do have We've started to get a team in place based on the money that KDADS, the Department of Aging and Disability, has already put up, $150,000. And um, I would just want to say to members that fund one team or five, we, we appreciate it. What we did in setting that number is just looked at we, what we thought was the unmet need in the community because the individuals targeted are the intensive cases of the intensive cases. And, you know, people who are almost absolutely without assets of any kind. And <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we can, you know, over time, we'll, we'll create a team, an ACT team, based on the evidence-based standards. We have to have, you know, one, one uh, staff member to 10, 10 clients. Uh, and then those clients can turn over in a few weeks or a, a few months or even, even a few years. So, but at any one time, one staff to 10, we can, we can build our teams as the funding comes in. And so your dollars would definitely help us build another team or two more or three more. Uh, we stand ready to serve. Um, yeah, let's see, comment. Um, wanted to, yeah, 
that's so I uh, <clears throat> wanted to be sure that we you know put ourselves out there as being very flexible we will get you those reduced budgets I think if you're just looking at a back of the envelope you could say okay 20 percent reduction equals four teams 40 equals three but let me get you uh, the exact numbers on that chairman great council member Valdivia you thank you chair um since taking office, the main thing that continually comes up in emails, phone calls, community meetings, neighborhood meetings is mental health, mental health, mental health. While I am more than open to looking at those reduced budgets, we know how once Menninger's and other agencies left they left this town in utter and complete turmoil. And so I've told folks that I'm committed to this and I could also just support them at this moment with this dollar amount. I understand what you're requesting though, Chair. So, thank you. So I will clarify, I agree with you. I'm supportive of giving them the full amount. Um, and I also know we have some follow-up questions for some groups, but. And I don't mean this, is, we haven't said no very often yet, and we're still two and a half million dollars over. So I am trying to at least find us some avenues to, uh, to, to get us there. So thank you. Anything you wanted to add, Councilmember Nager? Um, I really appreciate the flexibility. Um, that was my main concern looking at this, is that um, the answer to that question was, we need to have this ratio. And that was the answer we were getting from some other community from some other proposals as well like this is if we don't get this money then we can't provide that level of care and that totally makes sense um i can support this looking at those revised budgets knowing that we can go ahead and spread out the money a little bit more the money that we do have thanks all right the next one is fellowship and faith ministry inc they are being removed from this process they did not respond to our questions we called we emailed that's fine that's their prerogative but if anyone asks why got to answer us if you if you want to stay in the running um next up is the topeka center for peace and justice job training for juvenile programs original request was for 106 537 dollars the new request is for 100,469 dollars and 19 cents um so that is where we're at on that one. Council Member Valdivia Alcala. Um, thank you, Chair. I saw that the, that the reduction that was taken, um, had to do with, I think it was pain, was towards, uh, paying someone. Am correct. I right there? That's correct. And I think the director himself, which I, I thought was, very commendable. Um, I also believe in the power of restorative justice. And I also believe that the more people that you can get involved in this and have good facilitators and trainers, the more it's going to help our community. So um, I support this to move forward. I agree. I support this moving forward. Let's remember Nager. I support it moving forward. Next one up is, uh, well, we have two from Arts Connect. I can't remember if they were together or not, but if not, we're still going to take them up. One is a after-school songwriting at Boys and Girls Club for the amount of $69,480. Um, the other is for, it's on here somewhere. Hold on. Okay. The Arts Connect for first responders. And first responders. Yeah, I know. What I can't remember. Where's it on my chart? Oh, it's the trackpad again. It's for like $59,000. It's got to be here. I'm not crazy. It's, it's $59,565. Oh, I don't know what the heck I did with it. Maybe I passed them earlier. I didn't realize it. I think I can't find mine. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so there's those two. <laughs> I'm not sure what's... Huh. Hmm, sorry, I somehow left them off this chart. This makes no sense. Sorry, I need a second here. Well, anyway. It's, it's called the Artistic Expressions Budget. Yeah. And then the Rebel Song Academy Topeka budget. Yeah, I've got both the paper ones. I okay. just somehow did something with the with the my in my spreadsheet. Screwed something up in there. So okay. I'll figure that out later. In the meantime, 
Um, so, so the reason, not just because it's the same organization, but we take them up together is, I'll, I'll just be honest, I am much more supportive of the veteran program at this time than I am of the songwriting one for the Boys and Girls Club. Multiple issues, part of who it's serving, not that the children at the Boys and Girls Club aren't important, but I think the veterans program is essential. Um, as the application recognizes, beyond a couple years, uh, one of these programs is a little, it's more of a template to hopefully then sustain the program. Um, so so I, that, that's where I'm at on this. I, I'm willing to fund one, a little, a little he more hesitant to fund the second one. Uh, Councilmember Nager. Um, I am supportive of moving forward with both. I think the thing that um, gave me the most trepidation is um, how much of it is squarely placed on if ARPA funds are um, achieved. The in-kind donations um, are, are a smaller percentage. I would like to see that there was a little bit more buy-in from other sources. However, I am supportive of both moving forward, especially if they can go ahead and find other ways to go ahead and support these programs in conjunction with um, what the city would be able to go ahead and commit with ARPA funds. And I understand that concern. I guess it states pretty clearly in there that at this time there's just no promise of that. And that's what, yeah. you know, we, we can ask again. I'm not sure the answer will be, be different. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Valdivia. Um, thank you, Chair. I agree with you. I I don't believe that I can support the Rebel Song Academy, even though I know it's an excellent program. With the Veterans Program, first responders, we know that with the success of that program, that there's other resources that funding that she'll be able to be tap into after this two or three years, whatever the amount is. So I could support the Veterans. Uh, not the Rebel Song Academy. Um, all right. So I haven't done this very often today. So I haven't felt like we've had to, but I'm going to force us to do it now. Um, I guess what I'm going to do is, unless Councilmember Nager is okay with where the two of us stand, I can put it to a vote. I would like to make a decision on these two today, at least moving forward versus the other one. Um, I understand you're concerned about the Rebel um, songwriting group. As far as I'm concerned, it's 2v1, and we'll not move forward with the songwriting, but we will move forward with the veterans. Does that sound good? Yep, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Not a problem. All right. Next one is Catholic Charities of Northeast Kansas, increased wraparound services and building repairs. Uh, original request, 264980. New request, 180980. I think one of the questions, hold on. Yeah, they gave us three different budgets. I think their final one was obviously their, their what I'll call their smaller budget. Um, I mean, I, I'm generally supportive of this one. I guess that's my short version. Council Member Valdivia Acola. You're short. I mean, you're I mean, supportive I, of the third one? Yeah, of the, of the third, third one, of the one for 180, 980. Um, these are just questions with not knowing the way these organizations run. When I look at the cost of food, I guess my question would be, are they get, purchasing their food wholesale? Is any of this food donated? Do they buy it quarterly? If anybody's here from Catholic Charities to tell this person that doesn't know how you run your, your organization, that would just help um, give me a little bit more security and whether... I believe we should move forward on this or not. Yes. Tom Farmer. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. As far as the food purchase goes, mm -hmm. uh, I know that we buy from harvesters, but a lot of our food is donated, and some of it comes from collections here within Topeka. Mm -hmm. Some comes from collections within uh, Johnson County primarily, and so it's a variety of sources. But when we do have to purchase to supplement, what the donations are, uh, we purchase from harvesters primarily. 
okay, harvesters, do you know this uh, $9,000 a year, um, what is the percentage of like food stuffs that you have every year that you have to end up purchasing? Yeah, that would be a very small percentage. I don't have the exact number, but I could get that for you. No. If it's that, that small, it's probably not even it, worth it. It would be a really small percentage overall. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. You're welcome. Thank you. I mean, any other questions? I'm going to assume that roof is really bad. In fact, I'm going there after this meeting, and I expect there to be buckets because that's what I was okay. told this week is that. Okay. Because that, that is one that, again, is we've struggled with capital improvements, but, yeah, I mean, if it's literally leaking and causing buckets, to me, you, you can't operate without a roof, right? That's... So, right. so okay, that, that helps too, because that was the only line item. Not that I was opposed to, but when you had to make cuts of support service versus a route, but again, that's one that you got to have a building, got to have a structure, and you got to take care of it. I did yes. have one more, sir. Uh, new air conditioning units, too. Are these central air conditioning yes. units that you're referring to? There are two units presently, and I talked with our operations uh, manager just the other day. He did not know the date. And when they were installed, but he's seen them, he said they are very, very old. Okay. And th this has been on our list. For a while? For a while. Okay. And let, just let me say, I think every organization should have a defibrillator. I mean, kudos to you for putting it on there. We're trying to get those in all of our buildings throughout our 21-county area. Yeah, fact. it's very important. Okay, thank you. Mm, thank you. I say I'm open to moving forward with it. Did you have any comments or questions, Councilmember Nager? Nope, I'm good with moving forward. All right. Next one is SLI, training equipment to help intellectual disabilities. Uh, the request, original and revised, is for $277,885. Um, Council Member Valdivia Oh, gosh. Yeah, that order. Um, this. The largest part of this is going to refrigerator, stove, dishwasher, washer, dryer, HVAC, which we know that's been iffy, and hot water tanks at 10 homes. The lump sum is listed as $108,350. And when we asked if there would be the possibility of doing purchasing used equipment or uh, appliances, it was stated that that was not possible because of the type of needs the folks that they serve need. So I guess for me to feel more comfortable with this, again, I'm looking at huge to me. They're huge. 108,000, 65,000, 75,000. I'm looking at bulk amounts, and I would not feel comfortable at all moving this forward un unless we were able to see more of a breakdown. Is there someone here or online from SLI? Yes, Karen Streeter. Uh, I, I guess I have a question related to that. Well, two things. First of all, uh, is, that, is that a little bit more of a breakdown you could provide just in oh, general absolutely we can certainly do that and and i'm going to make an assumption here and if it's wrong correct me just based on whatever knowledge is sometimes kicking around in my head i'm going to assume that some of those appliances are specialty appliances that have to be designed specifically for the individual and what their their disability may or may not be you are correct uh, the ada requires has certain mandates as it relates to equipment, for example, positioning of the arm, how high it is from the floor, the amount of pressure that has to be applied to turn on an appliance, and a variety of other things. So number one, that's one of the reasons why used equipment, um, you, know, you don't see that type of equipment out in the public sphere. So it's acquiring that equipment for these homes to meet those special needs. Um, and. One of, one of the things, like other colleagues have stated, we are certainly willing to work with you and take a reduction. We're certainly willing to start that at 18 to 20% um, and, and break it down 
I think I would just, if I may remind you, um, and I know you understand this, um, we have our request is both a housing request, which you have all stated is very, very important to our community. And it's also a special needs request. Our request is, is unduplicated compared to the other request. Uh, only TARC is similar in that it works with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Their request is specific to children and ours is specific to IDD, um, or to adults, excuse me, persons with IDD. So it's important that I, we just want to know that the IDD community is seen, inclusion is critical, and that their needs are as addressed as well. We serve over, we provide housing to over 100 individuals in Topeka. We were Topeka's first nonprofit to do that um, in response to what happened with deinstitutionalization. So I just want to make sure that's, that's ahead of you. Um, we, our clients and staff, spent 229 days in quarantine in, in 2020 and over 100 days in 2021. Um, ma'am, ma I appreciate all of that, and we, we, we're, we, we got a limited time, we've got a clock absolutely. on this. So, yep. um, I, I have one recommendation to the committee. We can move this forward, ask for that breakdown of those appliances. I, I am going to do exactly what I said, the doorstep, energy efficiency lighting is great, it's important, I get it, but 6,000 of this request is for that. I would like to at least suggest that moving forward we reduce this amount to 271,885 and remove the efficiency lighting project from it. Agree. Do you have any comments or questions, Councilmember Nager? I would agree with that and I really appreciate that flexibility with the reduction knowing that we're trying to maximize these dollars. This was one of the projects that, yeah, none of these projects aren't worthy of this money. It's just figuring out how we share it. So I appreciate your ability to go ahead and work with us on that um, possible reduction and look forward to seeing that revised budget. Thank you. So just a heads up as we hit about 1230, since we have to be out of here by one, whatever we don't conclude in the next half hour, we will just, we're going to be here in October anyway. Um, that won't mean that we don't have some follow-up questions. And so anyone we don't get to today, uh, the last couple we have here, as you see them, if you have follow-up questions, you can send them to me over the weekend, and then Clay can send out questions early next week with those follow-ups based on what we've gotten here. Yes, Councilmember Valdivia. Thank you, Chair. And then Kalea, we'll be able to get from you in that where we're at right now, how much over we are of the 10 million, et cetera. Yeah, I've been keeping track so far, okay. maybe, so yeah. Thank you. All right, the next one is the Central Topeka Grocer Oasis Group. No, don't do that. Uh, for a green grocery store, original request 800,000. Follow up was for 640,000. Um, Councilmember Nager. Um, I am supportive of this project. If they had any more flexibility um, with a further reduction, I would be even more ecstatic. I know that this is something that also directly. I, this is a group that I've talked to in other capacities um, and is affects my part of town. And so um, I know why I'm so enthusiastic about it, but I am supportive of it and I would like to hear what you guys have to say. I know there's somebody here from that group, correct? Are you the lone? They send you to the wolves. All can the can you come up here? I, I, I got questions. and. As I said before this meeting started, there is no gotcha questions. That's not mm -hmm. what these are. That's and right. don't read too much into a question. It's just a question, okay? There may be someone else. I don't know um, if uh, Shamika Sims is on or not, but she may be. Okay. Um, uh, my name's Marge Arons, and I'm the chair yeah. Good to see of you, Marge. that group. All right. If you have these dollars, how much is the total construction cost of this facility? We think we're looking at three point five million. Okay. Not including not including the refrigeration. I understand. How much of that will you have in hand to spend and start the building of this facility? Not just guarantee those dollars as we think by twenty twenty four, but be in use and spent by twenty twenty six. Because that's my concern because it right. because let's be clear we don't get to keep these dollars right it is literally use them 
or they honest. go back to the federal government. We can't hold on to them later. We can't slide them to another project. So if, if, if anyone, this goes to everybody here, anyone who gets these dollars, if you don't do what you say, you have spent, you've lost these tax dollars. And I'm not directing that at you. I just, I continue to try to make that clear to the public and that that, that weighs heavily on all of us as we, as we go through this. Because that's my first big concern with this project. It's not that you're not worthwhile. I'm worried that the dollars can't be spent before 2026. We are told that this refrigeration, uh, which is essential to be able to provide a low cost overhead for persons who have little to spend on food at a, at a, a time that's very difficult for food and, um, and who now have no access. So I don't go into this too much, but we're told it's taking a very long time to get this pe these, this piece of equipment and um, these pieces of equipment. Uh, and um, there's a, a, a lag time. Um, our hope as soon as our lease agreement is signed is that we're able to uh, put in an order for the uh, low E uh, refrigeration equipment. Okay. My, my second big concern with this project in general and I've had this conversation with members of your board, so that this mm -hmm. isn't new information to anyone who's heard it, um, is at this time, there's no one to operate this grocery store, correct? I mean, it, there's ideas, but there's, in other words, we, and we all know mm -hmm. our frustrations with the high bees Kroger's, Walmarts of That's the world, okay. who, right, or else they would have built a place by now. We get mm -hmm. that. Uh, but to date, there's, there's no IGA that's been contracted with to operate this. And if that doesn't happen, what is the plan to operate the actual store? Who's going to run this store? We believe it, it may be, be an independent grocer. We have to have the lease agreement with Grace Mad. And we've just sent yesterday um, uh, the final correction to the lease agreement to them. Okay. So we're right. I mean, so, so there's a chance that could be done by October 28th? Um, I'm not going to hold oh, you to that. Um, you mean that the, yeah, le the lease, the lease agreement. agreement? Oh, yes. Our next meeting is October 28th. Oh, That's yes. Okay. Oh, yes. My, my last thing, and this is just for everybody. Wait, can I ask oh, about yeah, that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Lease agreement with Grace Med, how does that answer the question on it somebody doesn't. running it? It doesn't, but it shows us that that step is done, which they're indicating is key to recruiting now. In other words, if once we have a lease agreement that we own, we have the space and we have somebody to start building the space, their hope is that an IGA will then come on board and say, great, since you're doing this part of it, we will then contract with, start to contract with you to operate the store. Okay, so can I ask a yes, question? Yes, absolutely. Oh, so absolutely. do you believe by not having that lease agreement signed with Grace Med up to this time has been a barrier in communication for a third party to actually get on board to run it, the store? Like once they see it signed, they'll go, oh, got it. Okay, well then, you know, we may, we may be interested in this. I can't project a particular chain uh, or independent grocer who is standing there waiting for the lease agreement. That, would, that wouldn't be possible. Uh, we have uh, funding for a project manager, a grocery consultant. We have spoken with, but it has to be informal until we have a lease agreement. We've spoken with chains. I, our fundraising begins this fall. We have a grant writer and we're applying for grants. I, given the nature of the grocery business and the complexity of this, I only can say what I'm saying. Right. No, and I understand that. So before I say my last thing, sure. I, I'm supportive today of moving this forward so we can discuss it again a month from now, especially since you may have a lease and we'll see and you're right, it doesn't guarantee anything, but I think it would help us all. Uh, and this is not the, the bucket of cold water, which is why I say, please don't read into things. I'll tell you what scares me. Not about your project, what you guys have accomplished, it's great. I am supportive of it. I do think, and I will be talking with the city manager about ways the city can step up some other areas to help this project and get a grocery store. In Fort Scott, Kansas, they took CARES Act money. Oh, I saw that. They put together a grocery store, mm -hmm. it's a very similar model. And in four months, because they didn't bring in the right people to operate it, because the community thought they could operate it without this base of knowledge, 
it went out of business. And so uh, just know that that's, I'm looking at these things very under these microscopes for some of those reasons because of what we've seen. And so I, I don't want it to be taken as, oh my gosh, Duncan doesn't want what we're doing here because that's not the case. But as you'll find with other groups, I, I do like to ask these questions so we can work through it together and get there. That so. was a very um, negative piece of information that a county gave that money. We don't know the basis. We don't know the data they had when they provided $465,000 for that store. Um, so I, I can't respond to it. No, and I don't expect But I know that our four and a half them. years are uh, really grounded yeah. on good data. And I believe our relationships um, going forward are very positive because of our partners like um, the Small Business Administration. And um, I'm, we have to operate on a, a level of faith because we are grassroots. And, and we couldn't have done more to form a basic um, level of support. And I just thank you for letting us get here. Right. I'm uh, so, I'm very appreciative, we are appreciative, and I do understand um, this is where we are. I don't have anything else, anything? Council members, anything else? I'm okay with moving this forward at this time. And I, Chair, I can see moving it forward. Uh, this is really a hard one because yeah, it could go either way, and to to know that it might not because of so many different variables would be horrific for the neighborhood it and would. all the work that's gone on. Um, but I say we move it forward at the reduced amount. I think the biggest message I can give to you, Marge, and, and the and your board to committee is our again our biggest concern I think will be that 2026 deadline. And so any information right. you folks can you think you can provide between now and October 28th to show us that, yes, we, we think we have a timeline and a budget would really help us. Because I think it's not that we don't think you're going to get there and we think we need to do more. It's that we're under that deadline. And that, I think that's our biggest. So anything you can provide to help with that, I think, would be the biggest thing. I so. appreciate it. And I appreciate all this effort from all of you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. The next one is the Gil Carter Initiative. They have two uh, in front of us. One is for healthy food accessibility and child obesity, and the other is for da, 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 food clothing assistance for LMI. Um, where am I on my sheet? Uh, I guess I'm first on this one. Uh, I support. The food assistance and clothing for LMI, I am not supportive of the Healthy Food Accessibility and Child Obesity Program. That's, there's my short version. <laughs> Councilmember Nager, any thoughts or comments? I would be, I got a package. Um, <laughs> I would be supportive of moving forward with the LMI um, assistance and not moving forward with the healthy food accessibility. Uh, Councilmember Valdiviacola? Same. All right. The next one is It Takes a Village, Performing Arts Program for At Risk Young People. Original request 235,000, second request was 220,000. Uh, Councilmember Nager, thoughts or comments? I would be supportive of this if there was further reduction. Um, um, and my biggest concern, oh, wait a minute, I want to make sure that I'm in the right spot. Um, yeah, if there was further reduction, looking at this budget and figuring out where we can go ahead and leverage the dollars the best, what makes the most sense with the, um, with what we're tasked with funding, using this money for funding um, and then eliminating some of those line items that don't really fit into the um, outlined uses for ARPA funds. And I don't have a breakdown of how that would be, but um, I feel like for 200, 
$220,000, we need a little bit more flexibility with what they would be able to go yeah. ahead and leverage. Let's remember about the Viacola. Um, you know, the arts and culture is my weak point. I mean, that that's where my heart is. Um, and for underserved communities, it's definitely so healing and a way to keep kids out of uh, trouble and, and learn passion uh, for a various art form. So I definitely support the project. I do not know what the ARPA, so I would ask um, Kalea when we're looking at, uh, you know, a portable dance floor for 34,000, a permanent dance floor for 20,000, a van shuttle uh, at 35, is that a new or a used? This is the thing where I, I think that we have to be careful when, when we are encouraging the arts for uh, black and brown communities is to kind of use, again, we have to follow the guidelines, no doubt, but kind of use the same measuring stick as we would for predominantly or all white performance type industries that teach children so as not to diminish that dollar amount. I know we have the guidelines though, so we have to be respectful of that. Um, but just seeing what this company does is so, it's so magical to me. So I, I too believe we can look at cuts uh, and I encourage this to move forward as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm generally supportive of this. I don't, is Mr. Massey on or someone from It Takes a Village? I don't really have a question. I just want to, if you're here, yeah. say, just say, I want to give you some direction. Yes. Okay, Steve. Um, again, I, uh, similar to them, I'm supportive of this. Uh, and uh, the question we will ask that I will have Clay ask you is, if there are a few additional cuts to be made, can you make them? And I'm not talking $100,000, okay? Yeah. And just to give yes. you some direction of where the things I was looking at that you can decide is camcorders and the camera. Uh, I'm not sure 10 laptops seems like a few too many to me. And while I know you have to market to be productive, I'm not sure marketing is the area we're supposed to be spending these dollars in. So I just wanted you to walk away with here saying, oh, gosh, they asked for a few cuts, but what the heck are they talking about? I just want to give you a general idea of some of the areas that popped out to me. Um, so when you get that question, hopefully that may help guide you a little bit. And that is perfect. That's fine. Yes, we can definitely do that. Um, a lot of that, like for the portable floors and stuff, when we go to TPAC and we put on big productions, that stage um, really isn't a great stage at the moment, unfortunately, and I am on that board. But a lot of people bring in portable stage, portable floors. And those floors are very expensive. Um, if yeah. I get a used one, that would be good. But I, I have danced on that stage before in my production with my kids and have had splinters in people's feet and hands. Yeah. You so have yeah. No, th those are things I need. And, and Councilmember Nager knows this. I helped raise my niece, who's now 24, was in Ballet Midwest for years, graduated from UMKC with a degree in dance and now works for Kansas City Ballet. So those things I 100% know you cannot operate without them. And if you want this thing to work, you've got to have dance floors and mirrors and costumes and people to help you. So so those I understand. It was just some of those things I know you kind of need, but the outliers maybe that. that okay, yeah. You, we definitely so that's all. I just wanted to give you some direction so you weren't like, oh my gosh, what are they asking for here? So. <laughs> No, I appreciate that. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes, Councilmember Vadiviakola. Okay, so let me just rephrase this to uh, Kalea. As long as this is good, I think that they should have floors, portable, whatever. If we're looking at these small cuts, like Council, like Chair is saying, cameras, you know, marketing. We do a great deal with the small community organization I run that's not dance oriented, but it. it does a lot in community and we do a lot of guerrilla marketing you know it's just use whatever you can to get the message out there but definitely this program is has my full support so thank you okay all right we'll move that one forward uh, the next one is from community action rental assistance food and other needs uh, original request and still revised request is for seven hundred thousand dollars uh, it's primarily for their whole family advantage program. Uh, 
I'll start with you, Councilmember Valdivia Alcala. Uh, um, what did I do here? You know, I I would just want to know what additional reductions um, let's see, it went down the whole family advantage, so grant award well, did it go down? 350, 136, we'll provide one year of program funding. Yeah, they started at the 700, but they yeah. said if we wanted to provide one year, that would be the reduction. But again, I don't know how, what so, purpose that serves. Anymore. So one year, then how does it go on beyond that is, would be my question. Um, I know community action does good things. I would be, um, interested in hearing the feedback from the other two members. Yeah, so one of my questions, and, I, and I'm not going to ask this if someone's here because I think this needs to be put in writing to help everybody, and I want to give them time to think it through. Um, I, asked this I asked this originally, uh, how do you plan to fund the program longer term once these dollars are gone? And with respect, the answer was not helpful. Um, it was kind of a develop meaningful partnerships with local agencies to help leverage dollars. Well, that, that's not really a plan. So my question is, can you provide a more detailed plan of action as to how you would fund these once the, the dollars are gone? Um, Thank you, um, Chair. Yes. This is Teresa. This is Teresa Sal. Um, I'm the one that submitted that sure. on behalf of Community Action. And I can provide you more detailed information. Community Action is part of the larger National Community Action um, Program, and we are currently participating in a whole family project with them as a demonstration project with expected grant funding um, to hopefully continue our efforts. Sure. There is also um, some health and human services federal money um, that we will pursue. So um, although my answer was very vague, um, I can go into a little more detail um, to be able to sustain our, our project. That would be helpful, not just for me, I think this whole committee, and I think some of those projects, those, those are going to be some of the big questions, too, that once these move forward, when we make our final recommendations, that's going to be asked of us about a lot of these is, okay, this sounds great, but what's their sustainability model? And I want to be prepared to answer those questions also for everybody. Thank you, Chair. And, I, and I'm not sure if I missed another question. I am in the middle of the uh, uh, Nancy Perry Day, Day of Caring, and we have some volunteers that... I'm assisting as well. So did I miss any? No, you um, have not. You've been just fine. Okay, thank you. All right, so are, that, are there any other questions for me? I don't believe so. Looking at heads, nope. I think we're no, good. I think good. we'll move that forward okay. and get those get that explanation from you. Wait ten minutes. Thank you. Yep, we'll probably get thank through another one or two, and then we'll be done. Poppins Landing Senior Center. Uh, original request was for four ninety three four ten. New request was for two sixty four eight oh five. And 17 cents. Um, Councilmember Nager. I'm supportive of moving this one forward. Um, the cuts that were made were deep. They were well considered. I really appreciate the, the time spent on them. I am supportive. Uh, I'm also supportive. As am I. Okay. The next one is. For the YWCA of Northeast Topeka, continuing the day center for traffic victims. Original request 184 837. New request 101 636. Uh, I mean, I'm supportive of this. They, they made the cuts to the couple of things I think we questioned the first time around. So I appreciate that. And I obviously think it's an important program that, that needs to be around Topeka. Um, Councilmember Valdivia Acola? Um. I support too. I think also the additional questions about staff, um, you know, diversity in their staff, translation services, volunteers. It's it's thoughtful in approach to me, uh, as well as the needs that it is seeking to address. So yes, I support it moving forward. Do you have any comments, Councilmember Nager? I I support it moving forward. 
Next one is Stay Calm for marketing and education to stay calm in emergencies. Original request was 50000 Next one was 40000 um, I would like to suggest that if this moves forward, we make one more cut. I understand why they need them and want them, but one of their line items was $7,100 for additional marketing items. I am very supportive of the, the Stay Calm holders and making sure this program moves forward. I just don't know about paying for keychains, pens, and other materials. So if it moves forward, I would recommend it be at a $32,900 amount. I agree, Chair. I've seen these folders. Um, I know how much they do with volunteering and getting out into community, so I would agree in that reduction and support it moving forward. And I agree as well. All right. All right. The next two are a bundle. Let's, move, let's see here. Boys and Girls Club of Topeka. One is for buses and $180,000. The other is for recruitment and retention for $150,000. Member Valdivia Alcala. Um, unless I'm missing it, I understand the buses and think that is definitely a good thing. I also understand the need for employee retention. I did not, unless I'm missing it, get a sense of how they would sustain these increase in wages after the time is up. Is there anyone on here from Boys and Girls Club? Yes, this is Kalika Neal. So that's not an uncommon question that we are asking everybody where these goes to some staff increases over the course of a few years. I think our question is, how will those be sustained once these ARPA dollars are no longer available? Understood. Um, about 30% of our budget is funded through grants. Uh, most of those grants, if not all of them, go to new staff salaries. We've been able to sustain these grants uh, 10, 15 plus years. Uh, if you see we're on the city of Topeka, we come back year after year and awarded just because we're good stewards of the grant. So part of our initiative to keep those salaries increased long term past ARPA, <clears throat> excuse me, will be to continue those grant asks, as well as our um, community asks through our research and development department. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, so what is the will? <sighs> I said I'm for moving both forward. Me too. All right. All right then. YWCA of Northeast Kansas, facility repairs. Original request was for 418000 The follow-up request revised was $318,000. Um, is there? No, no. I guess I don't have a thing on that. No, uh, I'm good with this one. Me too. Yeah, I know. I've got mine out of order, too. But. And I, I think it. this one got out of order for me. It was with it's the other YWCA. It was earlier. Yep. I should okay. have. I forgot. We to, said yes for both of them. Yes, so. Okay, we we're good. So we're good. Um, because she's here, although she'll come back in a month, I know. I'm going to jump ahead slightly down a couple because this will probably be our last one, although we're so close. Okay. Um, Community First International Academy programs for school. Original request eight hundred thousand. Follow up request is for seven hundred and eighty thousand um, dollars. So I am generally fine with this. I had one area that gave me uh, whatever you want to call it, and I understand it. And now I can't find my thing. But in there, there was a program to the tune of about one hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars for aviation. Um, I get it. I understand it. If I was going to make an adjustment to this one, for me, that's where that adjustment would come um, to get this down to about 600000 So I just want to throw that out to the committee for, for consideration. Um, other than that, I'm okay with this. Yep. So, so I'm representing the aviation piece. Okay. Okay, so what was, what, what was the concern? We do need an airplane. We do need an airplane, and the reason why... There's only one airplane in Topeka that's for rent that, you know, at, at Billard. That's where the program, we would have the program at the school, the training part at the school, but to, for access to the airplane, there's only one airplane because I fly it at Topeka. Um, and that's the only plane that they use for all of their training for anybody that's getting a license. And so 
um, when and then when you rent it, it's one hundred and sixty five dollars an hour to rent. You know, and having access to that plane is just probably. I mean, it's you know, I just wouldn't have access to it. And we want this to be sustainable. I mean, we want to be able to. So, and I already have my first four students that want to. I have a, a Cuban kid. I have a a white kid. I have a Hispanic girl, and I have a, a black kid that want to that want to learn how to fly. So. Um, just to be clear, my concern is not with the program itself. Mm -hmm. My issue is we have a pot of money, and we've got an $800,000 request. And I'm not sure we can fulfill the entire $800,000 request on this request. So if I have to prioritize the programs as provided mm -hmm. to me in this application, I'm looking at it saying that while that program has value, mm -hmm. if I have to rank what I'm looking at in the application, it falls at the bottom of that ranking versus the other programs that the school is providing. So, so my concern is not the program and its value. It's okay. if I have to make cuts in these applications, that's where I'm looking at the cut to me could be made. Now, if the applicants, if you folks want to go back and say, no, 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 we understand you need another 150000 or something cut out of this, let us do it, I'm okay with that also, but I just wanted to be clear that's where I look at these, the value of these programs and say, I have to rank them, right? This right. is just where that one falls in relation to the other programs that the school offers. This is the tough decision portion of our program that, we, oh, okay. that we're starting to make. So, so one of the questions we will send back is, just to be very transparent, is this, this application probably needs to lose another hundred to $150,000 so to make total, it valuable. So the total, because there are three programs under this one Correct. total. Right. Okay. So for me, sitting so, here, the easiest one was to say, well, <laughs> if you just don't have this program, I can fund everything else. But if that's not the way the schools go, then, then, you then that will be the question we put back is, you right. tell us. Okay. Where you want to okay, make well, those cuts. I think we can do that. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to be Which very transparent you? about one of our... Okay. Issues with the, the application. So, so I, can, I might can take a little off the aviation program, you know, I mean, so. but, but everything here is like for this particular program, I mean, it's, it's, it's crucial, the things that we need in order to, to you know, and, and um, I think with the aviation program, I mean, it's far reaching. This is where we need, we need to get these kids started in aviation for, you know, and then it's, so. They cut somewhere else. Okay. So, so we will, we will, that question but is posed to you decide. today. It's posed to you today while you're here, but we will also include it in the follow-up question we send when we send out follow-up right. questions. So follow-up question on my end. So what is the amount that we're moving forward on this? Are we just gonna well, ask we're going to keep it or? right now okay. at the seven hundred eighty thousand dollar request. Oh, I can't stay there. Yeah, and then we'll 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 praise put the yeah. question back. But that, you understand if that's okay. like the, the the thing with the aviation is your thing, then while we're moving it forward the whole month. The whole thing, chances are we're going to need to see you cut somewhere of a hundred to. Like the, this will be a much more. I'm just trying to tell you this will be much more chance of moving forward if it's closer to that six hundred, six hundred twenty-five thousand dollar range than the current seven eighty. Gotcha. What you do with that, you'll have to figure out, I I'm guess. But I'm that. trying to be very honest here with you to keep you in the running and, and okay. give you a fighting chance here. Gotcha. Chair, if I could interrupt real quick. Yep, I know we got to uh, be done. No, Liz actually has uh, worked some magic. And if you can finish in 15 minutes. We can't. We only have five left. So Can you do it in 15 minutes? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we're because you told me to, so we will. So where are we now? All right. <laughs> I close so, the back. back to um, El Centro. El actually, Centro. we might only have like four. Yeah, five. Yep, El Centro would be next. Uh, immigrant Assistance Clinic, original ask, 828. 295. The new ask is 378295. Um, oh, is there anyone here from El Centro? They're like, yeah, man, I I've been watching Lalo's Netflix while you guys are meeting. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm here. This is Lalo Munoz. Hey, Lalo. So my, my, my real only question is, um, can you just, part of what you've put in here is mo money moving forward for fundraising, which is part of the sustainability portion of this, which is commendable. But I, I, could you provide just a little more explanation of what your fundraising process is currently? And again, we have limited time, so keep. Sure. But and then very, very, what you, how quick. you plan to engage that person to keep this sustainable? Yeah. So um, when it comes to services for immigrants and funding for immigrant families and the services they require, it's very uh, hard to find. 
there tends to be in two sort of uh, areas. One are small grants. So for instance, um, the Kansas Bar Association, uh, Sisters of Charity of Leavenworth, which provides small grants in, in amounts of roughly $5,000. The other pot of money tends to be at the national level where funds tend to go to your Houston's and Chicago's and Los Angeles's. And so there's in this middle part area where it just isn't much in terms of fundraising. And so one of the things we're hoping to do is to be able to address that sort of gap and help our organization grow our capacity to fundraise ourselves. Again, understanding that you all are looking at and asking us how we're going to long term be sustainable. I think that's important. And the other thing is, is just addressing when we look at all nonprofits in, in, the, in Topeka, um, I think oftentimes uh, black and brown organ run organizations just lack that that know how. And so that's why we put that as, as a part of our uh, request. Great, thank you. Um, Councilmember Nager, do you have any questions or comments? No further questions. I'm good with moving forward with those cuts. Trying to find it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you have anything? So the cut, it's been reduced to 378.295. And we've already gone over that the majority of that, is this correct, is going to go through fundraising purposes? No, no. no. Actually, the majority is going to go to services, right. um, services, legal services, exactly. So that is still the implementation of the clinic that you were talking about. There, there are two tracks. One is short-term and immediate services, more services for immigrants in the area of immigration. The second uh, sort of track is lo thinking long-term. What do we need to do in order to get us to a place where this, these services uh, continue into the, long, into the future? Okay, I'm just going to say just from my little perspective, I had a hard time understanding your budget. So tell me, with this new amount that you have proposed of 378, 295, just so I can wrap my head around it, how much of that will end up going to services for um, immigrants, migrants, et cetera? Sure. Uh, the 221,795 would go to uh, to the legal support services for immigrant families. And, and the rest would go to? Uh, yes, 156 would be uh, for work to help to grow our this capacity to be able to make sure that the, the service, additional service, continues into the future. And so that's fundraising capacity, and how many positions does that is that supposed to fill? That, that would be just one. For four years? Yeah. For four years, exactly. That's the other thing is I should mention is that these are for four years, yes. And that 221-795, were you able to find a building? No, no. Um, based on, on the feedback from the staff, I've taken the building and the, off the, the calendar, at least the, the immediate, um, you know, hopes. Um, but here's the thing is that when we are able to sort of gain the knowledge and the know-how to be able to grow our capacity. Um, now, now that we have those potential skills in the future, my hope is that we can begin to sort of work on a capital campaign and fundraise the funds necessary in the far future to be able to uh, look towards, again, uh, obtaining a, a new space, a larger space, to help more families. So the 156 divided by four is 39000 a year, and that includes benefits and everything? No, no, it's, it would be a, a contract for a, contract. a, a okay. profession. Yes, ma'am. So that'd be about thirty nine thousand. Yes. I can tell you just here. I totally support the two twenty one seven ninety five um, for legal support. Um, I I have concerns about um, the fundraising. And I don't know if, do you already have a plan? Do you, do you have somebody that, that you have in the background that you're going to be working with for this fundraising and already have it, they have given you what they believe that they can deliver to you for this 156000 over four years? Uh, no, ma'am, no, we have not. We have worked with uh, fundra fundraising professionals in the uh, past, uh, for instance, Ms. Um, but, um, but not right now, no. Uh, do you have anything at all that you can show us what that 156,000 could possibly look like if you have somebody to do it? Yes, actually, if you look on our original um, application on page 15, it would break down 
in terms of the marketing materials, software, uh, and in the fundraising professional contract. Uh, fundraising professionals, in my experience, we have contracted in the past, uh, tend to be about uh, 2,500 a month. So that's that's the majority of that, 39, 30, would be roughly 2,500 a month. Okay. Just in the, in the, in thinking about time here, can we go ahead and move this forward and just do more I think research? what we'll do is what we've done to a couple of these others. We will move it forward with the full 378, 295, but we will asterisk it with the, for the 156, that if we get down to brass tacks and that's partially a difference, whether even if we can do two years as opposed to four, that's when we will asterisk for that consideration. But uh, Kalia, I still have questions that I need to send you. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Lalo. Um, the next one is TARC, Feeding Clinic for Children in Need, original request 92500 Next was the new amount 72500 uh, I mean, I'll just tell you, this is an easy yes for me. Um, but I don't know what else to say. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. The next, all right, three left. Family Service and Guidance Center for their new youth uh, crisis and recovery center. Um, one million, they reduced it to 720,000. I'm inclined at this time, and this is one of those, and I do not mean it the way it's about to sound, take it or leave it numbers. I'm willing to move forward a request of half a million dollars, 500,000 for future consideration. I don't know that I'm willing to go above that at this point. My concern with this chair is the total cost is 7,611,924. They've raised less than a million. Uh, whether we give them the 720 or 500,000, my concern is that will it be done in time? I have some of the same concerns. Um, is there anyone here, and we don't have much time, but is there anyone here from Family Service and Guidance Center? Yes. I mean, as you heard us tell several groups, this has to be contracted by 2024 and spent by 2026. Yes. Is and that, construction is currently going on, and we are on track for a summer of next year open. So they raised all the money. So have you raised all the funds, or and are you building it with the intention of, well, we're going to build it, we better raise it. And that, yeah, that's not no. uncommon, so I understand that <laughs> answer. Right? No. So we are prepared to um, finance um, whatever we don't raise gotcha. we didn't feel like we could do a full-blown capital campaign to raise you know millions of dollars before we started the uh building project because obviously building projects take time and just the overall need for crisis services uh for youth as sure. well as the substance use treatment program needs we just could not wait Got it. Uh, so, and we are actively and aggressively going after additional funding. Gotcha. But please know that we are prepared um, and have a, um, actually, it is a joint effort by seven local banks um, that have come together in the community to finance whatever is left. So. Perfect. Thank, thank you. you for that. It is happening. Yes. <laughs> Sure. Chair, I could do the 500000 as well and move it forward. Any questions or comments, Councilmember Nager? I absolutely agree with you guys. All right. Last two, Housing and Credit Counseling, Inc. for Tenant and Landlord Counseling Eviction Prevention. Original request, 84920 New request, 76140 um, I mean, I'm generally supportive of this. I, I don't know that I saw any cuts. Um, that we could make in terms of uh, us, maybe they have an additional cut or two, I don't know, but. I could support this moving but, uh, forward. But I'm okay with it moving forward, yeah. That's me as well. Me as well. All right, and the last one is uh, HEARTS for Public Safety and Safety Crew Program. Um, 50,000 was the original, 45,027, 32 cents was the new one. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not supportive of this one, um, not because it's not great. I just, I don't know, it helps kids, I get it. I just, there were too many questions still, and maybe I need to ask those before I say no, but um, I have to make cuts somewhere. 
That's um, kind of where I'm at. <laughs> um, I think, Chair, a large amount goes to the rental of the space. However, since this is about suicide prevention, I would encourage that we ask all the questions that we need to ask about it to really deem whether it's it's worthy or not. And if we know suicide is growing at such an alarming rate, um, yeah. Okay. So. Well, then I'm fine with that, and I will send my follow-up okay. questions to Kalia. Yep. I think that's a great idea. Did we miss any, ma'am? Speak now, because we got to get out of here. Oh, we got There's more important people coming in. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. Uh, just for everybody's, the number I have now, which could change, is we stand at $10,947,310. So we've made some progress. I actually believe, whoever's still listening to us, if you took us seriously, listen to what we tried to tell you, and can really make some additional cuts, which... I think we can get very close to our number without having to significantly cut uh, too many more full applications. That is my whole hope and dream over the next month, and we will get things out next week to follow up organizations. We'll give you folks a week, another two weeks like we did last time, and then that gives us two, two weeks to review. So with that, uh, our next meeting is October 28th. I know this sounds horrifying what I'm about to say. There will probably be some other agenda items on that meeting, but... That'll be okay. They won't be super long, but they need to be addressed quick. Our legislative agenda, and there will be a brief discussion about our housing trust fund. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.